salutation greeting, viewers. Are you prepared to watch, view, another exciting episode of War? <laughs> yes, yes. Welcome to Warham Fantasy, greatest role-play watch show in all of Twitch view. <laughs> Here to play role for us is the famous text-to-speech writer showman, Andil. Who are you playing, Andil? Hello, my name is Arnold. I'm playing Arnold Fleischman, and he is an interrogator. Really leaning into this bit. <laughs> Listen, Will, man things and elf things, for now we scroll down the wheel, Skaven dumb wishes to know, bear thing, what is this dwarf thing? I'm intimidated. <laughs> <That's not> good. <laughs> good. I'm the rat him. catcher, and I'm just like, oh, I, uh. I <laughs> Next it. person. No, uh, 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 this one's name is Speaker D, and I'm playing Mercurian, the High Elf. Now we move down mm, to this uh, thing. Don't uh, 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 Oh God, he's having a stroke. Hi, hello, I'm Odoroshi, and I'm playing Ziliana Stonebloom. Uh, I wasn't expecting this bit. Hello. <laughs> and here to lead command us for the Great Horned Rat One, the thirteenth most cursed of them all, Hill Thing. Go. Neek, neek. Hi, I, I'm I'm Thurston on call GM. I'm here to GM. It's gonna be good times. Yay, fun. Wee. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> To another episode of Warhammer's Fantasy, just as we kind of preface uh, all the things. Uh, one, uh, basically, first five episodes are going to be all the free years, like, but every episode basically for Warhammer's is free. That basically you all get it over time. Also, for the rules and stuff like that, we are using uh, Warhammer Fantasy 4th Edition, and um, we're going to get things wrong. Uh, but if you ever do see that we get anything wrong, please don't be a jerk about it. Just kind of kindly, you know, with constructive criticism. So, uh, excuse me, gamers. Um, it's supposed to be this way. Why are you so bad? Instead, you know, just tell us, hey, man, uh, I found out the rule that you guys messed up. Uh, it goes this way. And so we can do better the next time. This book does have a lot of stuff to it. There's a lot of little niggly things to remember. So please forgive us if we get a rule wrong but i think last time we left off we had a very interesting encounter we were able to come back over tavern we had a sort of frenchman who was accused of cheating which was a very fun scenario i think we got blasted you know someone dude i literally at. wrote out a summary <laughs> where is it before i was gonna we... read it before we it's get like, to that, I really want to give props to Queek Head Taker for having an asthma attack on the show. It was yeah, really it was really <laughs> nice of uh, Queek, uh, Queek Head Taker to appear. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Head Taker, for appearing. And uh, oh, God! It'll be bad. That was him killing me. That's yeah. the joke. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> Whoa! -ho! Ooh -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Go Got for him. It, Go for I it, know. Thurston. That's it. <laughs> I love you all very much. <laughs> yes. Well, then, getting into things, I guess. Our uh, merry band of adventurers continue on their journey, having just arrived at the Inn of the Seven Spokes, only a day's travel away from their destination, the city of Altdorf. In only the past day, our adventurers have left the four ho horses coaching in, finding space on the roof of a coach, where they traveled south down the altdorf Middenheim Road on their way to Altdorf. Along the way, they found a band of horrible mutants who'd ambushed another coach and killed its passengers. As the adventurers defeated these mutants, they uncovered a body that bore an uncanny resemblance to one of their own, Arnold Fleischmann. The body was that of one Castor Lieberung, who seemed to be on his way to the village of Bogenhafen to receive a promised inheritance. Following their run-in with the mutants, our adventurers met with a group of war of uh, bleh, road wardens led by Sergeant Flaster and made a full account of the incident. From there, they continued on to the Inn of Seven Spokes, where they purchased accommodations for the evening. However, things quickly spiraled out of control when the Bretonian Philip Descart challenged the halfling entertainer Pandora Lostpocket to a game of cards. Publicly declared as a cheat, Philip attempted to shoot Mercurian with a pistol before running upstairs, only to be confronted by the full party of adventurers and forced to flee. And that is where we left off, uh, with our uh, adventurers allowing Philip to to escape as the the rest of the in 
attendees looked on in shock. Uh, Philip has now run out of the inn uh, with no pants on and only some of his, his equipment remaining. And various onlookers are looking around at the party. Mercurian has off screen paid some silver shillings to have Dr. Flaster uh, perform a bit more surgery to, to bring up his uh, his wound count back to a more uh, stable number rather than, you know, being hit by a crossbow. Our players have spent the night at the Inn of the Seven Spokes and wake up the next morning determined to find a new coach that will take them the rest of the way to Altdorf. So yeah, you all wake up and you're in the uh, Inn of the Seven Spokes, uh, in the tavern, which is currently serving breakfast. The four of you and Nugget are seated at a table together. So, Mercurian, how are you feeling? Well, I had another terrible nightmare, and I promise you, should I be shot by that bloody crossbow once more, I shall develop a rather fearsome phobia. So please, tip her to work on your aim, Baron. You seem to have a lot of bad luck with crossbows lately. What did you No, mean? just that one. Just that, oh yeah, it was the same one. It is not a particular it? crossbow, isn't it? I have a distinct feeling if you get shot by that crossbow again, you'll develop more than a phobia. Mm, yes. Probably an infection. More than hey. likely. Yeah. Well, I, if I it happens again, I'm breaking agents. the bloody thing, so keep it on its best behavior. Uh, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a pep talk for you. And I'll, I'll basically, <laughs> I'm just going to stow it away and just only prep my sling for now, considering, uh, considering we have to do five million checks to shoot the damn thing. And I don't feel like <laughs> doing that anymore. <laughs> That's fair. Understandable. All right, uh, so as you're sitting, a, a familiar face approaches. The, the halfling Pandora Lost Pocket approaches and gives you all a jubilant wave, uh, clearly having done up her, her clown-like makeup in the morning, coming by with her loot and her array of, of throwing knives. Hello there. Ah, good morning. You sleep well? Oh, yeah, yeah. All good, good to go. Uh, got got enough coin left over to, to continue on my way on the journey. That Making my way to Altdorf. That old cheat didn't take too much off of you, did he? Oh, no, no, no. Not at all. I, I uh, maybe was a bit, uh, a bit uh, suspect with what I told him of my, uh, my earnings. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait. How suspect are we talking? Mercurian. I, I, I thought she was on the way to poverty. That's why I did something. He just wants to be justified. I, I don't find that's it. That's all. That's all. Well, regardless, I suppose at this point, no harm done. The blo bloody bastard was a terrible, terrible. Uh, what's the what's the word? Um, uh, imbecile. Yes, imbecile. At any rate, if you're on the way to Old Dorf, we're heading that same way. Perhaps if you know of any reliable carriage that might be able to take us. Oh, yeah, I was gonna look around with some of the, the coaches. I guess the one you came on uh, uh, already uh, left just uh, about a half hour ago. I guess the uh, the noble woman on that one kind of said that it was uh, I guess uh, all hers for the, the remainder of the journey. Well, I hope they're not too drunk to drive again. Oh, did she? <clears throat> I'm gonna... Mercurian will remember this. Okay, okay. The, <laughs> the, the mandatory telltale thing flashes <laughs> by the screen. I don't see what was so bad about it from her perspective. She wasn't on the roof. Oh, well, you see. I was uh, looking to maybe get uh, uh, get on uh, ratchet lines if there's any here. Well, we had recently taken a drive on the ratchet lines. I assure you the luxury is not all it's pet down to be, but, uh, well, uh, do you know whereabouts in this town we might find a reliable coachman? That, well, I mean, there's coaches leaving this, uh, this inn all the time. I guess we could just, just t look around. I was going to maybe uh, check in with the proprietor, see uh, see if any of them have anything. Oh, very well, then. I could certainly arrange it if, if, you, if you'd like. I'm pretty good at talking to people. By all means. All right. And she turns and, like, starts going off and, like, conversing with the, the locals. All right. 
we do need to find a new, well, carriage work service here. I shall go find one. You have yes, something for yes. Furnaby where we can all to be inside this. That would be most ideal, I think. And uh, who knows, traveling with the uh, performer, maybe we'll get a ride and a show out of it. Do you think I'll get to drive again? No. Oh. <laughs> Depends Wait, on fun how in much the front. Course, we may end up getting a large one. But in that situation, my pay does not really cover it. So, you know. Well, if needs be, I can again contribute my relatively wealthy sum, though it's important I keep a savings. I have very much like to make an appointment with the banks at Oakdorf. I mean, I still have some of the coinage from the uh, or folk we ran into. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Fantastic. Well, to bankrupt you, Master McGurian. We just need enough to get where we're going. Oh, of course, of course. If it's Oakdorf, how far away can it be? Uh, by my approximation, we're not too dreadfully far away. Probably walk if we needed to. From there we should I would not. From from Baron's experience of building forts all around this land, probably with his with his clansmen or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, can I make a check to see if I know how far Altorf is away? Yeah. What kind of what kind of check do you want to give me here? I hope that you would answer that. Uh, no, I put this in the hands of the players, but fine, let me load up your I guess navigation sheet. would no, be the most appropriate. <laughs> I mean, navigation is, is a pretty good one. Oh, yeah, man, absolutely. I'm so glad we could agree. <laughs> so good. Uh, I just straight up rolled. I didn't know if you want to give me like a plus I was, 20. I was going to give you a plus 20. So. Yeah, let me just re-roll that. Don't worry. Yeah, it's okay. sure, it's sure, okay. Yeah, 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 just, yeah, yeah. Let me just click that again. It's okay. It's, it's, yeah. I, gotta, I, got I still spot. failed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank All right, you, ladies God. and gentlemen, we'll be taking a 20-minute break. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Baron, whilst you have failed the, the test, you, you do like recognize, you, you don't know a lot about the paths um, or the exact method of getting there, but based on a map, uh, even Baron can tell that, yeah, you're, you're about a day's journey away. Like, if you if you leave in the next hour or so, you're going to probably reach Altdorf uh, by, by, by sunset. Yeah, about, about sunset, I think, we'll be there. Hmm. Well, splendid. And I'd imagine, since this is your uh, human capital, Arno, it's uh, rather well maintained, not too many bandits, I hope. Do not make assumptions. Oh, I see. Well. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure we don't even get closer and closer to the outdoor if I'm not pretty sure how well the... The lands here are sending folks about to take care of the roads, but we haven't quite seen how close we were to the city. Even we were even ambushed by foul creatures that has to be pockets somewhere. Master Mercurian, there is a saying in Opdorf. Do not assume, because if you do, you make an ass out of you and me. Oh, that's a smart one. Well, I have I simple... It. Yes, yes, I also get it. <laughs> you know, when we strike it rich, remind me to take you all to Lothar and I'll show you what a city with the wall looks like. Lost Pocket uh, returns at this point. She's dragging a uh, middle-aged man with a sort of unkempt grayish beard forward. The man has wide eyes looking over. He smiles with a toothy grin that missing that is missing several of its teeth. Lost Pocket waves her hands towards you. These are the ones right here. Uh, everyone, this is Bernard. He's with Ratchet. He's uh, heading to Altdorf just this morning and has a has a full load ready to go for us if we want her inside. He, the man identified as Bernard like nods. Yup, sure do. Oh, who who's this little fella? And he gets on his knees by Nugget, who gives like a, a whining yelp and then sort of like nuzzles his head in towards the man who starts like petting. Them. Oh, this this is uh, such a lovely little hound here. Oh, that's me boy Nugget. 
Well, hello, M Master Dwarf. Uh, as, as I've been introduced, my name's Bernard. Uh, I, uh, as, as it happens, I was scheduled to take some folks, but they didn't arrive last night, so I have a, a free coach all the way down. I, I'd have to go get some payment from you, but uh, I, I could I could arrange a, a relatively decent fee for inside. I'd say uh, three silver shillings a head, and I could take you the rest of the way. Well, we do have a horse to transport, so would one of us just ride alongside? Oh, that's, that's certainly you can never have uh, you can never have enough friends on the road, I say. And uh, don't worry, this little guy here, he comes for free. And like Nugget, like lets out a little woof. Oh, oh. I'm really good. What size of cart are you looking at, sir? Say, say that again, friend. What size of cart are you running, sir? Oh, I got got a, a full full carriage, enough interior for. Uh, Four people to sit comfortably inside, protected from the elements. Uh, five if you're awful close to one another. And how much is this going to cost? Well, like I said, uh, based on everything, I could do uh, three silver shillings a head. Mm, that's not too dreadful. Baron looks at Mercurian. He kind of like tilts his head and well, come on, do you think? Of course, yes, sir. Uh... But quite honestly, I find that's a rather reasonable price, but... Uh, Baron mm, looks well, at him a little bit, a little bit sternly, <laughs> going... Oh, of course. Like, even Nugget Nugget turns his head, like, but he offered me a free play. <laughs> I think that nine silver shillings should do it just fine. Baron, if you're having trouble, I'll cover you too. But, but but it's we're just all paying. I'm riding my horse alongside. Exactly, it's coming to nine for all of us since our dearest friend is riding the horse and uh, gets riding for free. I'd say we're already getting a six shilling discount. There's a difference between being frugal and being cheap, and the men of old one are not cheap. Being cheap keeps us alive. Well, uh, keeps you alive. <laughs> Uh, that's a funny joke. We're all going to live. Did you fucking rich laugh at me? <laughs> Did you I just sit money. there with your fucking weird elf lips and go, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yes, I sure did. Yeah, Bernard is looking over all of you like, oh, so what? Baron writes something in his book. Oh, boy. I pay the three shillings for myself to give Baron a discount. But I will allow him with the party funds to cover the other six shillings. That's Excellent. not that's not what I want at all. Wait, but you said you were gonna use the party funds to pay for the card. I want you to pay for everything. Why be rich? <laughs> I wanna be richer than the elf. Well, that's a very tempting <laughs> offer, Baron, but I'm afraid I can't quite buy it, you see. <laughs> no, no. I want to get the fact that I had to pay. Bernard is now looking confused in this conversation. This, 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 yeah, this is, a, this, is a, this is just fucking off. Don't worry. Okay, so <laughs> uh, I, Baron, Baron will basically take the funds that he took from the uh, people and he'll pony up on it because that's meant for the party fund. So, yeah, he has one. Uh, yeah, I'll take the nine silver shillings and I'll pay them in. Okay, perfect. Yeah, um, Bernard takes it, n nods, uh, even takes a takes a brief moment to like try to bite down. Ah, yeah, good silver this. Uh, all right, I'll go get everything uh, ready to go. And uh, uh, ma'am, you'll be bringing your horse alongside. Is that right? Oh yes, I'll just be riding alongside. Ooh. Ooh. Keep an eye Ooh. on the road. Ah. Yeah. Um, I I I give her two silver shillings. I might want to go buy some feed from that horse. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to uh, very quickly put her off to go and buy feed for the horse. And okay. not lobsters again. Horses don't eat lobsters. You only make that mistake once. <laughs> okay. okay, so you're going to get food uh, and it purchased it for, for the horse, the horsey. Uh, yeah, they, they they certainly have have like food here. As I am madly going through, being like, "What the fuck? Do you like what's what's even regular food?" Do we want to uh, just write it down and then take care of it later? I, oh no, no, absolutely. Okay. I just want to make sure you're not like I'm paying a thousand dollars. No, okay. Uh, two two actually um two 
two silver shillings is actually pretty reasonable. It'll get you like a a good solid like two weeks worth of rations for this horse. It's a Excellent. lot of feed, but you know you, you you can like put it on the sides and even some in the coach as well. Break this gold piece that Mercurian gave me. Uh, there we go. But I gave you two silver shillings. Already. Yeah, the two oh, silver shillings. Yeah. Cover it. Yeah, I you literally did. You're good. loudly exclaimed, "I gave you my." <laughs> you, you accidentally buy like six months of horse feed. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get okay. a cart for that shit. Just. <laughs> I wonder how much well, yeah. is a cart for ourselves. Uh, for yourselves, it's actually like super expensive. Like, oh, buy fifty gold or what? Um, I just had this up. So a cart costs twenty gold crap. <laughs> All right, a coach <laughs> costs one hundred and fifty uh, gold crap. I'm good with running out of cart. Let's uh, let's keep going. Yeah, about to say Zorin, we don't have that much money. It's like, I know, right. but I just want to know how realistically it's <laughs> obtainable. <laughs> Horribly unrealistic. Terribly so. Huh. Okay. Um, here. All right. So with that, you, you get the food. Bernard goes out front and begins preparing. Uh, Lost Pocket sits down with you. Uh Mercurian, Baron, and Arnold, and you, you you enjoy some some breakfast, which is provided as part of your your room that you purchased earlier. And with that, uh, Bernard returns, having ready the coach. Ziliana, you have your your horse readied as well, and you are all good to set out. Well, boy. Yes. And with that, the carriage departs, heading heading south, continuing along the Altdorf Middenheim Road. Hmm. Well, Arno, mm. you're in your occupation one of the, uh, what is it exactly, the witch hunter acolytes or something along those lines? Pin training, yes, but I suppose you could call it an interrogator for now. Oh, intriguing. So it's something like a policeman or something, or a watchman? No. No, I understand that it's a little more extreme than that, yes? A touch. I like to keep law kept in these lands, seems to fall by the wayside quite frequently. But I do have means of enforcing it beyond simple force. No, oh, like what? Well, with this he's gonna kinda tap his chin thoughtfully for a second before reaching into his coat and pulling out one set of pliers. Well, those are rather persuasive, I imagine. Well, I don't usually have to use them, but, you know, some folk need a little first-hand experience. Hmm. What happens when you dumble the first hand? <laughs> ah, yes. Oh. Lost Pocket into... looks really concerned at that and, like, <laughs> looking at Baron like, who the fuck are these people? <laughs> <laughs> well, after the first hand... Uh, he reaches into his coat pocket and pulls out a very small hammer and chisel. Well, I wasn't expecting you to have an answer. I'll admit that much. I'll have many answers, sir. I intend to... Lost pocket answers. turns to Baron. <laughs> <laughs> so, how about this year's Schaffenfest? You, uh, you looking forward to it? Are you going to be in attendance? What? <laughs> I didn't... What did she say? Uh, this year's Schaffenfest. Are you going to be in attendance? Uh, what's a Schaffenfest? Uh, I'm not asking. You... I'm asking you. So. Oh yeah, I, I know. I know you're asking me. Let's see if you have any skills that would tell you about. Like, do you have any lores at all? I know dwarf. And okay, rock. perfect. I have lore right. rock. You have no idea what the fuck a Schaffenfest is. Oh, I, I have no idea what the fuck that is. Oh, oh, it's, um, it's, it takes place in Boggenhafen. It's, uh, it's a, it's a big, big event. Uh, it's kind of a fair and livestock market. I see, I see anything interesting happen there. Well, it's one of the largest fairs in the Empire. It attracts people from all around, even from, from nations outside. Ooh. Hey, well, uh, no, no, I'm afraid we have, uh, things to do with an opt Hopefully, if we're passing by around that time, we hope to see you there performing, though. 
Oh, yeah. That's exactly why I'm coming. Can't wait, really. It's going to be great. Um, and she sort of pauses. And, uh, so, what, what, what's sending you to Altdorf, then? Oh, that, that, just some business. Uh, just, just some mind disputes, that's all. Oh, mines? Do, do you have a mine of your own? Oh, the Stackward family has helped build various forts for nobles all around this land. But, uh, you know, we're just, just having a little bit of problem around the quarry area and some of the miners' places, and uh, we're just going to get the legal stuff taken care of. There is a there is a moment, and then you hear the sliding wood panel uh, from the front of the coach as Bernard sort of peeking. Uh, sorry to uh, eavesdrop there, Master Dwarf, but uh, you Aye. saying your family was uh, involved with, with building edifices around these parts? Aye. Well, that's very good. Uh, are they affiliated at all with the Imperial Engineers School? Well, I think we worked with them able to sell off. Then there's a couple of places that want, you know, some, some special orders done. And uh, oh, that's that's, that's good, you know. Probably. The Emperor, he's a, and like this guy's clearly like just talking to hear his own voice at this point, yeah. like talking over you. And he's just like, the Emperor, he's turned his back on them colleges of magic. Like he's getting the engineer school to build all these new messenger towers across this area. It's about time the Emperor saw sense and got rid of those witches. That's what I say. I, uh, excuse me, what was that exactly? He says Mercurian, who presumably after the sixth torture implement had turned a slight shade of green. And yeah, like, you know, Arno is putting away a very small corkscrew. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, Emperor, he's turned his back on the colleges of magic. I think he's getting ready to make a move against him, I do. You think so? Why on earth would he do that? Because they're witches. Arno's going to turn his head to Mercurian. But to say, there's plenty of reasons to be very mistrustful of the witch in this part. Perhaps a witch, but this is the school founded by Archmage Teclas, the Tower of Hoeth. This is the Elvenkind's gift to you to create this college of magic. Why would you do away with it in lieu of some engineer corps, as helpful as I'm sure they are? Well, well magic is bad. To have a study to back that up. <laughs> a <laughs> silence falls in the party. <laughs> to back up this statement, magic is unwieldy. It is dangerous, and those who practice it often have a tenuous grasp on its power, least of which the human elements of it that choose to do so. And more often than not, they would love rather to turn to piracy and banditry. That's rather unacceptable, don't you think? Oh, but of course. And indeed, I've heard rumors of some dreadful death mages somewhere in the Empire. Not much of it, I hate to say, but a disciplined mage, not a witch, a disciplined mage, is as useful to a society as, say, a college of engineers. You can create grand infrastructure. You can harvest fields in the muck, if you wish. It's how the elves ruled the world once so very, very long ago. And yeah. from my understanding, the elves don't rule this world anymore now, do they? Whose fault is that? Magic. <laughs> uh, Malekith, but <clears throat> moving away from that, I would endeavor you to consider the fact that if these mages perhaps were more properly trained, if there was harsher standards of discipline within your colleges, perhaps you would have less witches and more competent mages that don't make you fear any wand or wizard that comes across your way. I look at Mercurian, or Baron looks at Mercurian and goes like, oh my God, the society sounds like they're all nicely trained and everything. Do you have anybody that does anything into the equivalent of a witch or doing evil magics even though they're trained? Ah, uh, well, every so often you do have a certain <clears throat> sort of uh, elf that is a rather grim sort, but they tend to uh, not stick around on Ulfwan for very long. Uh, uh, piratical raiders, uh, cane worshippers, that whole deal, but they're not usually found in the inlands. They're not setting up camps on the roads and ambushing people. Indeed, I hail from Safre. Safre is the most magical place in all of Ulfwan. It's also one of the safest to travel, so long as we have good intentions. Those kinds of people don't exactly do much to endear the common people of the Empire to magic. And even that aside, that is what I'm here for, to convince them to behave. And Sigmar bless you for that. 
Two, sir. Uh, one, 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 one. Now I'm, I'm feeling a bit rude here, ma'am. And uh, like Bernard looks out, uh, clearly outside of the cart. And Ziliana, you see the other. Uh, wh what do you think of witches, ma'am? Ziliana, who's like watching butterflies as this is happening, looks over, just huh? Witches? Yeah. Wh what do you mean by witches? Magic users, scum of the earth. What do you think of them? Scum of the earth? No, I think they're fine. Oh, I mean, really? I don't know any of that fancy magic stuff myself. I'm a little more, uh, rely on my sword a bit more. But, uh, you know, some smartsy folks and get really good at magic and they can do a bunch of really incredible things. I've seen mages protect the innocent and, you know, do all that kind of really cool things. But, but, Give him but, just like a big empty smile. Yeah, and he's just like, well... I that, that's fair, that's fair. I mean, uh... You know, magic can be like a cool sword that you use, you know, magic-y things for. Right, right. You know. Right. Bernard quickly turns away, looks back through the, the hole, the lead, the, or the slit leading in, into the actual carriage itself. Um, uh, Mr. Arno, sir, I just want to really thank you. you. What you're doing is Sigmar's work, really, and uh, uh, blessings upon you. Thank you! I'm going to close the wooden slit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> before he does so, Arno is going to tip his hat lightly to the man. Yeah, the last thing before Mercurian shouts, <laughs> thank you, and clams it in his face. <laughs> you know, I swear, you're all going to be up in arms about magic until the time when you have a famine, and you can only cure it by transmogrifying dirt into pumpkins. Cross that bridge when we come to it. Dealing with banditry now is more important. Uh, I completely agree. I... Here you Can you give me a plus 20 perception check? Of course! I would love nothing more to notice the gun that he is now pointing at the back of my head. Uh... <laughs> Every NPC in this now just uh, At the, all uh... times. Whoa! That's, that's eight levels of success! You got a two. two. What's so, your Yeah, two with eight levels of success. Okay, so... As you're having this like this this moment of like closing off the the slit and being in here with friends, that's when you notice something. Like you notice that there's there's this slight like redness by Baron's eyes and and like an inaudible like sniffle happening from from Arno occasionally, and your keen elven eyes are detecting the early onset of of a cold on both of them. <laughs> Mm -hmm. oh, you and you are trapped in this tiny box with them. Uh, you, pe you people are topical. Oh my! Oh my goodness! <laughs> first, first thing first, Rakirian. Notice the exits. Uh, you got any Sigquil? Uh, you know, it's at times like this I can't help but imagine that it'd be quite useful to have a mage on standby. <laughs> I'm gonna quickly move my entire body away. I'm facing my back towards Baron like I just dodged another crossbow bolt. Do I need Watch to put down a 15 foot cone for my sneeze? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's like cone of cold, but it's cone of snot. Pestilential. Oh god, breath. that much snot? Cone so of bread. <laughs> Is uh, I have a very important question, Thurston. Okay. Is Nugget sick? Uh, it does not appear that Nugget is sick. No. I'm going to reach out and just kind of grab Nugget and bit, pet him like I'm losing my sanity, like I'm at the climax of like an H.P. Lovecraft novel. Like, Nugget, you are my shield in this storm of pestilence. Nugget, you must protect me. Mercury, put something over your mouth! Now that's a good idea, and I'll hold Nugget up at the level of my mouth, and that's how we'll no. do the rest of this ride. <laughs> just his like face is staring back <laughs> anytime <laughs> Mercurian talks there's just the Nugget's face there <laughs> oh my gosh alright that's yeah that, that that's it's fine um, alright uh, after several hours of travel you find yourselves in the flatland the 
Altador Flats, a vast marshland that surrounds the Imperial capital. And at this point, you are noticing a large, large number of other coaches. You're routinely seeing other people either coming or going. Uh, like, 10 minutes doesn't pass before you're seeing groups of two to three other coaches, carts, caravans, all moving and, and like, crossing one another, sharing this, these immense roads. You can see, if, like, the land is rising up to a patchwork of farmlands and small villages. Neat! Okay. Brilliana, uh, you're outside uh, and on your horse during this. Are you sort of like, like how, how are you taking this journey? Are you just kind of taking everything in? Are you wanting to interact with your horsey? What, what What's your thought here? Oh, yeah. I'm just mostly keeping an eye on the road. Um, kind of um, looking around, making sure that we aren't accosted by any horrible creatures again. Um, probably trying to uh, get to know my horse a little better. You know, lean down, pet it every so often. Yeah, absolutely. Um, can you give me an animal care test? Animal care. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. Just a just a plus twenty. Animal. I don't see animal care. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Scare the fuck out of that animal. I care for this horse. No, I don't. Oh <laughs> shit. Ninety four. Am I about to get kicked off? You failed your yeah. care roll. Right? Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, Gotta put her down. Here you go. Oh no! <laughs> Here's a crossbow. Uh, you can tell that the uh, <laughs> the 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 horse uh, like is is kind of spooked still, uh, but that's about all you're getting. Oh no! I'm sorry, buddy. I promise there aren't any more of those nasties on the road anymore. I think. No, not no, it's close to the capital, ma'am. Uh, well, we'll be fine, but Bernard sort of smiles over. Speaking of which, does that one have a name? Oh, uh, says his name is Nay. Nay? Yeah, N-A-Y. Uh, is that some kind of joke? What? <laughs> just, just a little little bit of animal jokes, that's all. Ever been out of before, love? I, no, I haven't. Uh, I heard a lot of good things about it. Mercurian seems real excited to get there. Uh, it's a big, big city. Lots, lots going on there. Uh, do you know where you'll be going? Where you'll be staying? Uh. Do we know where we'll be going or we'll be staying? I call to everyone in the group. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. No, we don't. That's well, what sure I call the spirit of, of adventure. I remember back when I was young, and this, like, carries on for, for a bit longer in the journey. Aye, aye, arrow in the knee, etc. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Curse and, of ages. Yeah, you, <laughs> you, you make your way uh, through the farmlands, carrying on with these kind of conversations. Mercurian inside the carriage, holding up poor Nugget to defend himself with. But it's not long before you see the great white walls of Altdorf glimmering in the distance, stretching to the east and west. Uh, the sun is is beginning to, to set, and as it as it does, the coach is now uh, approaching the city. And off in the distance, you can even see the the outskirts of the Imperial Palace looming over the River Reich as you're approaching. But. Before, not before too long, you find yourselves entering the Wolf Gate at the north of Altdorf. And there we go. Yeah. The We're loading Altdorf Fancy. The Altdorf Fancy map. Uh, that's because there's actually two versions of, of this map, uh, and the, the one in the, the actual adventure is kind of a sketch version. I prefer the fancy version. Yeah, I know the program that made this map. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I immediately identified all the assets. <laughs> I was gonna say, to be fair, this is the uh, this is the the like print map you can you can buy of this from Cubicle Seven. Ooh. Interesting. <laughs> Tell us more, Thurston. <laughs> yes, I mean that that's all I got, really. <laughs> but you you find yourselves approaching through the gate and see the the streams of people moving in and around the area. How, do, how are all of you sort of taking this in? Oh, 
Well, I'm quite pleased to finally be in civilization as cramped and uh, perhaps not quite as sterling as I recall. It's lovely to see a people's capital city. It really tells you a lot about its character. What am I getting from Altdorf, Thurston? Just I glance around. What, what, what do you think the feeling I'm getting is around here about, like, you know, what this city is like? It What's is a it smell big... Like? It is a big, vibrant city. A very close-knit city. Hmm. Am I seeing, like... Is it, like, all... All enemies? Or am I seeing, like, uh, you know, like, a diverse array? Like, there's, like, dwarves or, like, even, like, a few city elves here and there? Uh, very rare are you seeing non-humans. Like, mm -hmm. 90, like, 9.9% .9 of people here are human. Hmm. Well... I can say this certainly looks uh, rather defensible. It's nice to see running water through a city again. It's been a while since Lothan and all that. Uh, I and it still smells the same too. Uh, I assume can I also make uh, a potential check with bonuses from the Stackwolf's time, probably having to go through Alt Dwarf ever so often to do several dealings. You know, to kind of know where to go. Is like, oh, the, oh okay. there's definitely a tavern that the stack walls have usually gone to every so often on their stops. Um, if he doesn't. Can I also make one for like Laura Reichlin? I'll I'll allow. Let's see here. Um, I will allow Baron to give me a flat intelligence check, and Arno, you can give me a, a Laura Reichlin test at plus twenty. Awesome. I have rolled a Dang. 90 for some Opposite. reason. That's quite bad. Yeah, uh, so you you are not familiar with the big city at all. I um, got a 31 out of 25. Yeah, so one one uh one failure degree. Uh Baron, you've you've had like your family has has had sent people here, but you have very rarely crossed through through Altdorf. In fact, you've you've only sort of seen it from the periphery while traveling elsewhere you've never been in the city proper yourself yeah. uh so so you, my parents you are... were like oh yeah if, if yeah. you ever need us we're gonna be over here and i'll just i'll never know where exactly is but yeah and so you've got an idea one one place that they've talked about a lot lot is uh the konigsplatz which appears to be the area where you're going based off what bernard has explained during the journey uh, and you're you're sort of like trucking down the main road. Now, one thing you also are aware of is your destination, because you've been attempting to secure yourself legal counsel. So you will be heading towards the um, offices of Sturman and Lichtvort on the island of Toteninsel, which is right kind of... Um, to the southeast, there's a small little islet you can see that has two bridges connecting it from from where you are. But first, uh, you're you're making your way. Your group is making its way to the Königsplaza. The the coach sort of heads through town, uh, and you get a good sense of these these tightly like tightly wrought buildings buildings built on top of one one another tall spiring towers uh architectural feats that appear to be like generational with different structures built alongside or adjacent uh to structures of entirely different make everything here though appears to be the same kind of like wrought wood or some sort of stone there are people moving about everywhere Ooh, well then, Baron, I think that you know our destination first and foremost. At one point, I would like to do a little bit of a sightseeing tour around here, if you don't mind. Now, you'd first, let's secure room and boarding. Uh, oh, of course. I heard of there course. was a place called the Conning Splats, was it? The Conning Splats. Spats. Okay, not Splats. Spats, okay. You know, Splats. There's a, there's, a, there's a tavern over here. No? Uh, and my, parents, and my folks told me, basically. Down, down the pink building, take a left, down to the blue one, and then take a right. Oh my god, it spelled so fucking weird. Jesus. Okay, let me sure. write this. Okay, <laughs> just for everybody to know what this is, I thought it was like cunning spats or something, but no. It is like a K-O with the two dots above it, which I never learned. Yeah, then I-N-I-G-P-L- 
A-T-Z. Because, you know, nice. that's a name. <laughs> Is that, that place. It's an, ah, yes, I see. Well, uh, so they gave you colors and shapes. Did they All right, we're stopping here. Get ready. Oh, I get ready. Get, get ready for what? I get I get ready to to get off. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I like the, the the coaches coming to stuff. All right, end of the line here. You're at the Cunning's Bats. Everyone, get off. Thanks for thanks for the journey. I gotta go find myself some beer. Is what I gotta do, and and set this back in. And like as as this is going on, like you see Lost Pocket who gives a shrug and she's like, "Well, time to get going." And she sort of like hops out, looking around, and there must be hundreds of people in this square all of them are like tightly knit together and as you as, as you start stepping out and Ziliana you've been noticing this as you've been approaching there are just people who are shouting various things like you hear Angelino's best grub in town stay at the cabin fiddle finest music and best breads and then you can see what appears to almost be a zombie-like horde of reaching hands towards you and your luggage. Uh, let me help you, Governor. I can, uh, I can take you where you need to go. Just let me I grab your case there. I look, at, I look at the group saying, get them away from Oliver's stuff now. Uh, sorry, we're fine. Uh, I can carry plenty of things. Please, clear away. I'm Judge like a Sigma, official business, one side. I, I'm like it's helms deep for me, right? I just have like I'm using like my crossbow or whatever to kind of like swing away. People are like get away from the stuff, get away, fuck <laughs> off, get away from me, and I'm like trying to bat them away. <laughs> I have a I have a question, Thurston. Yes, this place is crowded like unreasonably so, right? Absolutely. Have I ever seen this many people in one place in my entire life? Oh gosh, no! Like this, this is the this is a sprawl of of just bodies of un unimaginable numbers. All right, I'm just gonna have a moment as I look out. You know, I mean, elves are a uh, receding people. They're, these cities aren't really so full up. So I'm just going to sort of take a moment as I take my first steps in Old Door. I'm just gonna look around side to side. It's gonna lift up my hands in the middle of this crowd, and the party's just gonna see Mercuria just kind of like. <laughs> oh, he's doing it again. Oh no! Just don't look at him. Well, gentlemen, I suppose we should be going to this coning plants. You go. That'll be the end of that. Oh, you're, you're, you're in the coning plants. This is like it is. He, the, the the coach has literally dropped you off at this this large area because it's it's clearly like a melting pot drop off point in town. They're going to the Koenig's plants. It's not that hard to pronounce. Come on. Koenig's. Of course. Oh. And you you hear this loud trumpeting off in the distance. Um, followed, and, and like all of you hear this above the throng of just shouts, which are quickly dying out to the sounds of the trumpet, you hear the sound of marching feet. Enough that it almost feels as though the ground is shaking under military tread. Oof. Yeah. One side. Right, yes. I'll follow Arno's lead. Off to the side! Off to the side! You hear this, like, imperious voice. As a man is rushing forward in plated armor with a single large, obnoxiously large, even, uh, plume feather uh, on the top of his helm, uh, wearing the white and red livery of the of, of Reichland, and, and sort of, like, pushing people back as more soldiers follow up behind. And as this is going on, a figure rides behind a phalanx. A, a stern-looking, regal man bedecked in the most impressive armor atop a massive ebony horse. Let me show the art. Oh. Behind him is a line of knights. And and all of the people start like bowing as this figure like like kneeling or some just half bowing as this figure passes by. Arno will bow. He is an imperial citizen. 
Dude, can Arno give me a uh, plus 40 Lore Reichland check? I'm so glad he found all his Elector Knights. Counts, brother. <laughs> he hasn't found them all yet. I'm pretty sure we're, we're lacking a few. Plus 40, you said? Yes. Uh, 36, five successes. The figure marching, or the figure on the horseback leading the way, is Emperor Karl Franz. Oh. All right, gang, let's roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> I take out my crossbow. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, we all have a chance of rolling 100 followed by 100, and yeah. then we win. We win. We can more. do it. We, we can do it. Whatever. I spend my resilience. I spend my fate. We'll, we'll do yeah. better than Grimgore. Let's go. I have become a demon prince. <laughs> okay. Arno hey, will uh, break. Arno, you, you recognize this as, 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 uh, as Karl Franz, the emperor of the empire, the lead of Reichland, the undisputed master of, of, human, of humanity's greatest empire in, in the old world. Arno will quietly but harshly whisper to the other three, Bow, damn you. No, I'm okay. Uh, Baron will reluctantly bow. Yeah. But, I uh, could. Oh, sorry. That's, I, 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 I'm starting to think of how to min-max how we can kill Carl Franz. All we have to do Fuck is go you. to an alleyway. <laughs> we have to go to an alleyway. We just have to find a, a couple rats. If we get succeeding hits on them, we can stack up advantage. Yeah. If we get like 10 advantage, then we can. Then I can do range attacks to keep the yeah. advantage up as we come into Carl Franz. And then they can, we outnumber them as much as we can in an alleyway. We can start single-handedly destroying the entire army. Listen, <laughs> man. This, this man, we don't stand a chance. He's got Lord's Choices problems to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 man is twenty five percent of the total points of his army. We can't fuck with him, correct? <laughs> and that's without the fucking griffin that's in the zoo. <laughs> I'm, uh, I I will do one thing. Hearing that this is Carl Franz, uh, which I might have uh, taken. Oh yeah, you'll head. you'll over here like whispering now of like it's the emperor. The emperor's out and about. I am going Don't forget to forget Angelino's best grub in town. Mm -hmm. Angelina, no, shut up. I'm going to uh, uh, take a moment and just as I'm kind of bowing, because of course I would, uh, I'm going to try to catch my eyes and memorize the faces of those that are around him. Okay. Uh, and I'd like to try to roll some perception here. Sure, absolutely. All right, cool. So just challenging? Yeah, let's do challenging perception. I'll okay, sure. Uh, I will use one of my fortune to re-roll this, because okay. this is very important to Mercury. Absolutely. Alrighty then. Yeah, Excellent. You, no, Mercury, no. two failures, uh, the second one worse than the first. Mercurian is also just kind of, like, in awe. You're still getting over the shock of all of these people. This is probably the most, like monumental day in Mercurian's life. Like, he's been in this place with all of these people, this, this, this seat of civilization that, uh, like... Um, untamed, and now the leader of, of humanity has just walked on by. Look at the, look at the, the heads and the uh, shiny armor. And I uh, guess, yeah. Uh, well, knowing that I'm kind of overwhelmed and I, I won't be able to do this, uh, I'm going to uh, just look while they're passing. I at least want to take notes of the heraldry of those that pass. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've, you've, you've got an idea like this this moment is is engraving itself in your brain yeah. you don't have to skill check like you 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 definitely recognize heraldry of, of of these who are passing and you're getting a sense of like oh like this is a big deal you might need to research who these individuals are but you you have a good sense um but as you are processing that as the moment goes on just as quickly as it came it passes uh, and the assembled crowds cheering grows loud as the procession proceeds and the entire parade is passed and as the parade the tail end of the parade passes it's almost like a flood of humanity just fills in the gaps and it's back to more shouting, more more loud voices crying, Well, the Emperor graces us, so clearly the Feathered Clam is the place to go! As the, as the commotion ends, I'm just going to grab Ziliana by, yeah. like, like, the, like, her I'm just gonna be like, <laughs> I'm so happy I wasn't shot to death yesterday! 
want to. All right, calm down, Mercurian. Oh no! Yeah. Oh no! Oh, save! Save! And you, you, you all hear Lost Pocket now pointing as one of her satchel bags. Uh, also, like the 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 loot satchel appears to have been grabbed by a small child who is now running away with it. Oh, <laughs> Ziliana's head's gonna snap around when she hears this, and I'm just gonna start barreling toward her. Start running toward uh, toward the thief. Okay, okay. Um, so, uh, is anyone else going to chase after this? Yes, shot? Mercurian yeah. would without thinking about it, because he's just so caught up in the moment, and he sees his friends running, he's like, ha <laughs> He's kind of a little. Uh, he's he is uh, currently <laughs> suffering from the stupidity rule. Ex excellent. <laughs> uh, Baron uh, Arno, you see this, Baron? What do you do when you see like Lost Pocket turn and pointing and shouting, "Thief!" I look at Arnold and go, "Well, well, they're dead." I start, you know, <laughs> recognizing his <laughs> <our> stuff. <laughs> well, <laughs> sure. You can handle your little discussion in a minute. I will be going off to follow them. I'm gonna make sure they don't run into some. Oh no! Let's wait. We have all of our so stuff, right? So Arno's gonna go to. Well, it's like, like we have all of our stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have Article all the luggage right here, sir. Arno's lock and load. I cock my crossbow and start heading off with him. <laughs> you, you cock your crossbow and return it to your inventory. <laughs> <laughs> I just leave it loaded just in case. Uh, okay, so yeah, all right. Uh, can I get each of you to give me a challenging athletics check as you chase after this urchin boy? Get his ass. Get him ass. Uh, 47. Uh, oh, that is a 15, so four degrees Very of success. Uh, Baron, were you doing that? You were mm -hmm. running as well, right? Yeah, yeah. My athletics of 24 is right on that, Chief. Fuck uh, yeah. Do it there we go. 31 nope. out of 24. It's not terrible. So respect. very quickly, Arno, Mercurian, and Baron. Wait, can can yes. I um, do the thing to make that one degree? Make that a success, or would that not work? Uh, you want to use your fortune? Yeah, I think that, that would bring it up to one, right? It'd bring it up to zero. Yeah, it would. Okay, I will do that. Okay. I just been sick here. Wait, no, so, yeah. I have no fortune. Oh. I'm a dwarf. I'm dead. Never mind. I think, no, no, no. Your fortune re restores every session. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So if you have one, then it, whatever your uh, fate is, you should have equal to that. Okay, sure, sorry. My bad. Yeah. No, you're good, you're good. My bad. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so you succeed that. So Arno, like Arno, you start rushing ahead. Mercurian, you've you've been rushing with Ziliana. Uh, like we we see from our camera view through the crowds as like Ziliana takes an immediate lead forward, and uh, Baron kind of joins in, though he's a bit slower. He's he's still keeping good pace. Uh, it looks like Baron's about to to tire down, but gets the second win and rushes past Mercurian and Arno, who become just lost in the crowd of people, kind of getting out of breath and pushed in the throng until they're kind of stopped in their tracks together as the other two have now rushed past. And uh, if I could get Ziliana and Baron to give me another athletics check. Oh, you yeah, son geez. of a whore. <laughs> <laughs> Still just challenging? Uh, it's challenging. All right. Well, uh, I failed. Marginal success. So at this point, Baron is like just about to catch up to Silicon. Just there is this this overwhelming just like shortness of breath, and you have to stop, Baron, as you see Silicon like power running ahead. I assume some kind of like um, I... Terminator Two run. It's, it's set <laughs> yeah, up an exactly. athletics check. Even though I've already rolled it, but if you allow me this. Mm -hmm. I want to have. I want to shoot a shot from my sling to oh, potentially no. hit the perp. Wait, in a crowded street? Mm -hmm. <laughs> in a crowded street, you want to strike the child in the back of the head with a rock? Yes. <laughs> sure. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna kill the child. Um, you're it? not That's... gonna do it. This rock sure will. Okay. So, um, before, before, oh god. Okay, before this baby back bullshit happens, um, let's see. Just trying to, just trying to you, maim you the boy in the leg. Do you care about hitting someone else in the crowd? 
Oh, that's a good question. It's a real good question. <laughs> I know, like, we... as Baron takes out the sling and Zilliana somehow having some instinct, I suspect you're turning to me and going, no. no. <laughs> and yeah. Baron will go, like, in slow motion and go, Fine, and I will care. So I'll have you know, a minus. You, 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 uh, you ever play Kotor, right? Knights of the Old Republic, mm -hmm, and you know, mm -hmm. you ever talk to Candorus, and you talk to me like, yeah, Candorus, you're like a pretty nice guy. I mean, like, I wonder what's going on. And then you bring Candorus on a mission, and you know, you see how he's kind of edgy, but I mean, you know, he means well. I mean, how bad could he possibly be? They take a look at his dark side score, and it's all the way to the bottom, and he's in like the dark fire misty pit of like black evil darkness. That is Baron. <laughs> I also want to say that at this moment, Ziliana has the, the head turned back and then carries on running. Nugget has stopped beside Baron and looks up at Baron and gives the dog equivalent of good boy. <laughs> will you go boy? Gives him a nod. Uh, Ziliana, will you give me another athletics check? Please? All right, one more. If you don't make this one, I'm hitting the kid. Holy, success. Holy crap. Four success I, levels. They require three successful tests to catch up to the thief, which, all right, here we go. Uh, so you have now, like, like yeah, Robert Patrick Terminator ran into, like, chasing this, this child down into an alley who is now, like, trying to, like, climb over a wooden wall but clearly can't and turns around to see you silhouetted by the, the setting sun at the end of the alley, like, <laughs> clutching onto the goods. <laughs> I reach down, I'm gonna pick him up by the scruff of the neck. What are you doing, little one? People gotta eat! People gotta eat! Right, and so do the people who you stole from. Now give it here. Um, no. Oh, 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 shit. Um, why don't you give me an intimidate check? <laughs> right. Plus 20. Oh no! <laughs> you could no, fortunate. I'm too kind. You could fortunate. Uh, I could fortunate. Oh, oh, yeah, I might as well. Can yeah, I, well, that one hundred. Uh, can Baron <laughs> be there, level. standing threateningly with his crossbow? <laughs> He's still running. Give it a sec. <laughs> no, I want to threaten the child. God damn it! You've already uh, did that. Okay. We never Failure. rolled a hit. All right, now, now, Baron. Uh, so, like, clearly this child is like, oh, this is like a cuddle buddy elf. Like, nothing intimidating is going <sighs> on here. Like, I don't know if I can. And then we see the shadow, a much smaller shadow at the far uh, end of done. the alley with a crossbow. So if you hurt that child. It's like, it's just, I guess it's darkened and the one candle on my head is like a Cyclops evil Eye of Sauron eye. As I approach this child, oh, drop Don't. it. Don't. Drop it, Jayden. I'm sorry. Drop the like it. Let me go. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's a shh. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, I'm gonna look this kid over. Does he look uh look rough? G give me an insight check. All right. Yeah. Oh, where's my insight? It's around here somewhere. Insight. Yeah. Where is it? Is it not in my skills? No, oh, you might not have it then. No, oh, get wrecked. Um, just, uh, yeah. wow. Just, uh, um, just it's like Baron will walk up to the child and be like, like, how do I eat? So why just steal, son? Why just steal, son? <laughs> it's only, well, it's oh, intuition. Lot. That was the check I was looking for. Yeah, she should have it. Yeah, sorry, I said insight. Wrong, wrong one. Oh, Intuition. Okay. <laughs> Intuition. Okay. There we go. Uh, just challenging? Uh, yeah. Uh, two degrees of success. Yeah, this is this is just like a, a poor, like a poor child from a poor family mm -hmm. who's trying to trying to make some coin on the side. All right. Well, you can't go stealing things from strangers. You understand? Okay. Right. And like it's not looking at you, it's looking at the steadily advancing dwarf shadow. Okay. I'm going to hand him two silver shillings. What? Alright, you're gonna take these. You're gonna go buy yourself some food. And you gotta promise me you're not gonna be stealing from no more people. Okay. 
All right. Looking at the shadow of the dwarf. Okay. Get the away. Your boss will be irresponsible in your life. I'm trying to be noble. <laughs> and he like starts running, trying to desperately rush past Baron. All right, all right. I, I pick him up and I just put him over the wall. He was trying to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Clearly, just like drop. There's a slight like thump, and then. <laughs> Baron, you can't threaten children with bodily harm. Hey, he puts the crossbow away and going like, oh, did you give him money? I did give him money. Good. Well, hopefully he can use that money to try to learn to become a better person. Even though he's in a uh. desperate state of affairs, he still has to learn. And a little frightening him will hopefully uh, put him on the right path. So, good thing I didn't have to spend any little binds. So thank you, Viliana, for at least giving him some cash. Come on, let's get back to the folks. I'm sure they're worried about us. And hope next time we see that kid, let's, uh, let's take it. Let, if we ever see him again, this horde of people, then we should uh, make sure he's on the right path. Come on. And as you say this, as you say this, Baron, you turn uh, to, to go back down the alley that you've advanced down, both you and Ziliana. But there is another large shadow that stands at the end of the alley. And you just hear this. What? Hello there. I fire my crossbow. Well, wait, you sword. <laughs> <laughs> and then then we uh we cut away from you two and we cut to uh Arno and Mercurian who are like out of breath in this this bustle of the square. Very important question. Yes. We put the horse away, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, because I didn't because uh, if we didn't, then I would have to go back and get the horse before someone stole that and ate it. Okay, great. <sighs> well, it's always this exciting and all off. I wouldn't know. Aro has not been like running full tilt sprint. He is pacing himself and jogging very slowly. Okay. Um, as this is going, this is going on. You've, you've kind of lost track of, of of where your friends have run off at this mass of people. Um, can both of you give me perception checks? Plus twenty. Oh boy, perception! My whoa, favorite whoa, whoa, thing whoa. to roll. Uh, three degrees of success. Wait, wait, wait. Very good. Uh, five degrees of success. With, uh, three apparently. So Mercurian, you're you're able to kind of catch just like the tail end of where your friends have gone. Um, they they appear to to like rushed into an alley and they're they're still far a far ways off. But you you're gonna have to like go to the crowd to reach them. Arno, you notice this, but you also notice something else that is very strange. Um. There's a group of two, uh, sort of in like common street clothes. Uh, one of them is looking directly at you. He appears to be a, a middle-aged man with sort of like short, curly blonde hair, um, and he's scratching his his ear, his left ear, with like the little pinky of his right hand in like this awkward motion. Mm -hmm. And then he stops and looks at you. So he was looking at us, and then he scratched his ear. Yeah, like he was looking at you, and then took his right his right hand and like went to scratch his left ear with his pinky. That is probably a sign, but of what I don't know. Mm, what do you see, Arno? Gentleman over there making some kind of. He was looking at us a second ago, and then he did something real unusual. With the it. man does it again, this time like a bit more, like almost stepping into it, kind of like a wink without the wink, like almost turning the left ear towards you and scratching it with the, the right pinky. I intuition. Are we about to get jumped? You can give me an intuition check, sure. I was going to do that as well. So Yeah, yeah, something. absolutely. Uh, ooh, two degrees Challenging. of failure, tragically. Yeah, uh, for you, actually, plus 20 for you, uh, Arno. Eh, failure, 87. You could fortune that. I do have two still. Yeah, I'll fortune it. Okay. And roll that again. Ba-bam. Let's take it a second. Oh, yeah, you're good. As uh, as, as you, you are staring at this fellow. What was it? There we go. Six, 64 still. Ah, failure. still, yeah, still not quite enough. Um, You can tell, like, this... You're not 
obviously you, you you recognize this is some kind of code, but you're not sure if like this is like you're gonna get jumped, you're gonna get and, and the, the person looking around does it a third time again, like stepping even more into it. Person can so I'm allowed to re-roll it. Can I then use another fortune afterwards to make it level? Um, I think so, yeah. In that case, I will use both my fortune to get this position. Okay, so with with just like a, a marginal success, um, y you can tell that like this is this is them trying to give some kind of like sign countersign situation. Uh, clearly, they they have potentially mistaken you for someone. Um, so I wouldn't know the sign in particular. I I think I know what the, I think I know who these guys are, and I probably would have caught on to it as well, being mistaken for the the dead fellow who was a ways back. Uh, can Arno attempt to... What would be a good thing to roll to guess what the countersign is? Um, a flat percentile roll. Alright, you got it. Against what? Yep. Just a flat percentile roll. How about a Holy one? Holy crap! Alright. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> God. <laughs> him. Is that nice. the second time we've gotten the uh, Arno like not one? Holy yes. crap. Okay. One. Arno is the MVP of this adventure. <laughs> Don't fuck with Arno. Jesus Christ. He guesses the counter sign. Uh, what is it? I, I want to read the paragraph from this adventure. No, the correct ahead. response to the secret code is a slight raising of the eyebrows and the brushing back of one's hair with the left hand. <laughs> no, I got an idea for this. Yes. Arno is going to silently beckon Mercurian over. Yes. Until Arno Mercurian. places his hand on top of Mercurian's head and raises his eyebrow with his index finger <laughs> and uses his hand to brush his hair back. Hair. While pointing him towards the person. Well, it uh, seems that Altdorf culture is rather more eclectic than I'd thought. Hold on a second. Holding on. And uh, as I say, holding on, I grab invisibly on, you know, I put my hand inside of my coat. And of course, that's on the hilt, my sword. Ugh. And like, there's like, a, there's like a, a like sigh of, of, of relief as one of them, like, like kind of comes over the other one who is clearly looking at the crowd also approaching. Oh. Oh, good, 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 sir. Arno is going it's... to go along with this, uh, I guess. Or isn't it just? Very good. Yes. Well, pleasure to finally meet you. Very, very good. Uh, am I? It's, it, we were worried. Oh, believe me, I was worried as well. I'm here now. Why don't we discuss some things? Uh, we've, uh, we've got things uh, ready for by the docks tonight. Mm, yes. Come on. Let's go to a more secluded area. Up up ahead, why don't we? And I'm going to bring him slightly towards the dark alleyway where everyone else was going down. Because I'm trying to follow our our apparently Olympic speed running uh redhead elf <laughs> and also mid Olympic speed running dwarf. I like to imagine Baron just rolled there. We're very good sprinters. Dodge roll. I'm very athletic. Um, well, we, 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 we don't have much time, sir. I uh, I apologize. We were just to, to make sure that you made your way into town safely. Of course. Where am I going from here? Uh, we were hoping you would tell us. You said it was dark side, yes? Well, it's, it's where we, we, we were going to have a, a, a boat ready. Is there a tavern near there? No, the boatman in. That sounds fine. Okay. The late night, we'll uh, we'll be by there. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Then. We'll see. Then, like pull pulls back and starts like rushing off into the crowd, nodding at you vigorously. 
Carter will watch him go while Mercurian is standing next to him, probably with his hand still on his head. Like yeah, I'm, a puppet. yeah I'm, just, I'm just looking so assured and like, of course. The moment he leaves, my face completely drops. What the hell was that? Oh, I have no idea, but I would love to find out. Is this about that, that dead man we found? The one that looked exactly like you. I thought I was being racist when I found it, so I didn't mention it. No, it could possibly be. But it would be interesting to find out what exactly they are doing in regards to a boat, or why it needs to be kept so secret. Mm, indeed. But first... And as as you, like, have that at first, you, you both turn and see that a figure of, like, a large man has stepped into the alley where your two companions had run down. And we cut back to Baron. Uh, Baron, I believe last we'd left, you said you were going to draw and shoot your crossbow. Is that correct? Oh, uh, yeah. I definitely was 100% going to do that after I see clearly who this yeah. person is and his motives. It's Carl Franz. Oh, you, awesome. He is <laughs> fucked You're in definitely alleyway. shooting him. We outnumber him. We got this. <laughs> it's Malekith. Lol. So you... You see this shadow, Zilyana, you see this shadow too of this like fairly well like muscled individual at the the end of the the alley, kind of silhouetted by the by the by the sun. Uh can I help you? Kinda of blocking the way out, mate. And and with that, Baron. The, the sun like the, the the reflection of the sun finally gives a bit of definition to the character. And this is for Baron, but I'll share it with all of you. Ooh. Ah. Oh, <laughs> it's so good to see you, Joseph. Put the crossbow away. Ah, strike it out on your own at last, eh? Aye, aye. For more time, you young rascal. I knew you had more in you than your old life could satisfy. And he comes up to, like, give you this bear hug. Uh, uh, Baron will return it in kind. But, oh, yeah, that mind's definitely making me a lot more weary. So sorry, I almost shot you there. Oh, it's it's all right. I, you wouldn't be Baron if you weren't throwing a rock or trying to shoot someone. <laughs> oh, Who's absolutely. this lovely lady you have with you? Oh, you're not getting with elves now, are you? I, uh, oh, no, no, no. You'd never know I did anything like that. Uh, this is silly. No, hey, I'm I'm silly on come. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just come in and meet my friend Joseph Quarter of Quadrant. It's a very good friend Quartier, of mine. Pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Any one who's a friend of Baron's is someone I look out for, and by that I mean I'm worried about them because they're friends with this one here. Ha <laughs> <laughs> uh, I reach over and like give him this very vigorous uh, handshake, just like the, the the Terminator handshake, you know. Uh, <laughs> God's has got some strength to you. Have you ever worked a boat? Have I ever worked a boat? Uh, you, once or twice. Would you like to work a boat? <gasps> oh no, we uh, don't work without pay, Joseph. You remember the stack wall away? Of course, of course. I'm not saying I wouldn't pay. I just need some more people for my boat. Oh, well, I'm oh, more than I mean, happy I, I, I think we could help out. I mean, I don't know that, what other business Mercurian has planned in this place, but... Uh, I'd like to go sailing. Uh, at this point, both uh, Mercurian and Arno uh, cross and into the alley, seeing this scene. What's all this about Hi. sailing? Uh, he says he has a boat and needs help working. Oh, yes. You are currently preoccupied, Zilliana. I? I. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, like, hangs her head a little bit and shuffles over to Mercurian. I mean, we weren't going to do it right now. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I'm guessing you all have business here in uh, Altdorf. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Aye, aye. You, you know, the mines are a little bit of trouble, so we're here to help arrange some of this stuff. But what, what's this about your boat business? What happened? Oh, nothing, nothing. I just need some hands. I'm going to, to Bogenhafen for the Schaffenfest. Oh, do you I just see. need help loading? Oh, well, anyone who can help me, I'm going to be going downriver there. Bring some goods, some wine, some other goods. Oh. Well, what's your, uh, what's your exit date? Ah, oh, well, it's next few days is basically what I'm looking for. I, I can probably leave as early as tomorrow, if need be. 
but but enough about business. How about we get ourselves a drink later tonight? I know you're you're busy, but if if later in the evening you want to to meet and have a drink together, I'd be all right with that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, do you have anything in recommendation? You usually find the best spots for the family. Boatman Inn. That's Boatman where Inn. I'm suggesting. Clues in the title. Whenever I'm in Old Dorf, I have to visit at least once. Best beer north of the Reich, I say. Uh, come on, we'll have a drink there tonight. Aye, then on the way, I hope my friends don't have any objections for the good night. Oh, and, uh, you might want to go in. It's your horse. They have a place for horses, right? I should probably move where I put my horse. Ah, uh, of course, of course, of course. Well, uh, I'll, I'll meet you there tonight. I, <laughs> oh, there, Sigmar uh, above, I, and Grandfather Reich, too. I see this dwarf running down with a crossbow, and I'm like, that can't be Baron, could it? And then, sure enough, it was Baron. Blessing from above, I say. You, you find folks, I assume these are your friends, too. Hey. Hi, my name's Joseph Korchin. Um, you find folks, go about your business, and I'll meet you at the Boatman Inn tonight. I'm gonna be there one way or another. <laughs> I gotta have some drinks, all right! And he, like, smiles and, like, starts walking down the, uh, the, the alley away. So gives the instructions nod. and how to get there from him. I, um... As this guy goes, I'm gonna, be, of course, be pleasant. Be like, yes, yes, farewell, Mr. Joseph. Um... Roll some intuition. Boatman Inn, sh so shortly after finding that there's apparently some secret thing at the Boatman Inn. Is this guy... I'm going to roll some intuition. Is there something okay. up with this? You sure, if you want. Yeah. Any connection? Uh, two levels of success. Uh, you can tell that this guy has enough knowledge of the inn that, like, he's not using it for nefarious purposes. He likes drinking there, as far as you can tell. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it also seems like it's probably just a popular place. Oh, fair enough, yeah. Absolutely. So he gives the smile, walks on, leaving all of you in the alley. Uh, and to answer your question, Baron, uh, you could probably tell, like, with a name, you can find a place pretty easy in Old Dorf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where? Lands? How was your adventures with the child? I don't suppose he transmogrified into the dwarf. No, no. He wasn't please. a dwarf, he was a human. Oh, I thought he was a dwarf. Oh, gosh. No, he just looks like a dwarf. Yeah, no, yeah. I figured because I was he's like, oh, he's a dwarf. Big. And then he swore by Sigmar. And I'm like, oh, that's unusual. Well, maybe he's a city dwarf. Who knows? <laughs> oh, I got back what he stole. I hold up the, the coin purse that uh, they got from uh, our halfling friend. And I gave him a little bit for the road. So hopefully he won't be doing none of that again. Hey, lovely. Hey, let's see it then. See, watch the this. I yeah. the the coin purse. Yeah, yeah just to satisfy my own personal curiosity. I'm going to take a look inside. He's going to see how loaded the entertainer was. In December. Yeah, exactly. Lost did pocket has now finally reached in. Oh, oh, did, did you find it? Oh, we got it. Yes. <laughs> Quickly close again after opening. <laughs> yeah, she comes up and like, oh, oh, it's all in here. Oh, blessings, blessings. Oh. I was worried I wouldn't be able to, to buy buy passage on a boat. Ah, are you going to the Boatman's? Uh, the, the, well, boatman's I'm, Inn. Bo boatman's Inn? I've heard that's a good place, though. <laughs> Haven't been myself. It was on my d bucket list for this town. Uh, but no, I'm, uh, I'm got to find a boat that's uh, heading down to uh, Bogenhafen. Got to get there for the Schaffenfest, you know. Well, my friend can help you out there. Just go with us. Oh! <laughs> Really? Okay. Ah, he's looking for boat workers, and if you're willing to work, he's willing to carry. That's I, right. I always like doing work. Hi. There's a boat going to Bokenhofen for the... I, I, oh, man. I, ooh, I was going to list everything off in a row, and everyone's going to be so pronounced, my pronunciation. It's going to sound so sing-song, but no, the dream is dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Off to You're the going end. to Bogen for the Schaffenfest. <laughs> You're going to Joseph's got the boat from Bogenhafen to go to the Schaffenfest. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Say that three times fast, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, I will likely see you there. Yes, it, it seems as though we have quite a bit to contend with with all this uh, boating nonsense. It's a uh, for a moment retired to a more secluded alleyway, one less uh, decrepit and dank. Well, all I right, there is a bit of smell. Lovely uh, as out of office. 
Uh, with that, how about we take our break here and we will come back? <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Hey everybody, we will be right mm. back. See you in about 10-ish so minutes. Be right Me, back. Really. Goodbye. Bye. And right. we are back. Hello. What's up? Ah, yo. All right. So we, we left off with the, the party wanting to have a follow-up discussion in a darker, scarier alley uh, per Mercurian's request. Of course. Yes, that's yes. exactly what I said. The, the dingiest of alleys. <laughs> uh, I believe sure. you wanted to plan out your next steps. Now, just as a quick reminder, your original intent for coming here was to assist uh, Master Stackwall uh, in reaching the lawyers on the so-called Island of the Dead, which is over here on the map. Wait, I'm sorry. You have lawyers on something called the Island of the Dead? It's a graveyard. Yes, I do. But why are the lawyers there? Oh, well, you see, it makes a lot of sense, because when people die, they have all sorts of legal matters. So you bury them, and then you walk across the street to get your legal matters sorted. You know, that makes a lot of sense. It's also good for them so they can be amongst their own kind. Oh, yes. Um, are those real? Yes. Oh, bloody hell. Have you ever seen one? <laughs> Horrible creatures. Oh. Yes. Well, you know. Where are uh, we, folks? Start walking. Where, where are you going? Okay, so are you going to make your way towards the island of the dead? The yeah, island yeah. We have some time before uh, before drinking tonight, so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. All righty then. Exactly how professional I'm going to have to be for this one, Baron. Do you know Very this lawyer? Professional. Very professional. Very well. <laughs> what the... Ugh. I'm going right. to just cough up a thing of phlegm, which is probably bloody from all the crossbow shots I've been eating. Baron spits <laughs> into his glove, takes off his helmet, slicks his hair back, puts it on. Gotta I look, look at him like I look at him like he just ate a baby. <laughs> 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 but I say nothing. Uh, oh, geez, should I brush my hair? Um, oh, you, um, you look wonderful, don't we? So you make Thanks, you make Barry. your way down the street, uh, crossing the bridge that leads to the island of Toteninsel. God, I love these names. Um, the island itself is is like a small, dismal place, which you've gathered has the nickname of the Island of Death. The buildings here are primarily granite structures, especially to the sort of eastern side, which are mostly buildings dedicated to more the god of death, with shrines, tomes, ossuaries, and priest cells here. There are a few other buildings to the west side that are primarily the, the domains of lawyers, undertakers, and masons. You carry on, and eventually you reach the site of Sturman and Lichtwurf Law Offices, which is denoted by a fine sign that sways gently in the light breeze off of the river that surrounds the island. All right, Macarian, so you're going to be doing your thing. What, what should I do? Should I should I stand and look intimidating, or should I, uh, should I, should I not? Well, let's see. Mm. Uh, I believe that it's very hard for you to be anything other than an encouraging sight. So I just recommend uh, I, uh, you being you and shutting up. Uh, well, that really isn't me. But all uh, right, I'll take your word for it. Uh, yes, fair enough. Well, uh, in either case, just don't... If he asks for money, just don't give him any until we say so. Gotcha. That's the rule. Thank you. All right. Give him a thumbs up. Baron will knock on. Uh, come in. Baron is going like stay the man. It's your, it's the stack walls. Stack who? Uh, uh, hello, uh, and like the, 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 a a portly man in fine clothing looks up from behind a desk, putting down a quill. He has a monocle over one eye, uh, looking down. Uh, um, uh, you know, my, uh, are you here for a refugee or visitor visa? Uh, we don't do those here. No, no, the, 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 the mess advice sit ahead of time. It's the, not the issue of the stack wall, mine. 
Stack Ward's mine, was it? Stack, Stack Wall of mine. You know, the bill of the bill. Stern Wall? One second. It's, it's under, it's on the stack wall, uh, Gregor stack wall. Uh, Gregor stack. So when credence to this, can Arno move up beside Baron to be like, yes, and he also has a human with him, so you can stop being a clown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you come up and like, like stand beside and he looks up. Oh, uh, stack wall mine. I see, I see. Well, like, there was a missive you said? I that was sent ahead of time, uh, basically asking for, uh, basically ah. meeting with you so we can go over the uh, situation of the stack of mine being overrun, ask assistance, and, and uh, well, I have rights. some bad news, friend. Uh, we're, we're booked up solid for quite a while now. But, 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 but we we put paperwork ahead of time. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, if you look at this stack right here, uh, this is. About three stacks ahead of yours. Each of these are requests that have been sent in ahead of time. But but we we, we sent our like two years early. And, uh, Baron has like his helmet off and he's kind of holding it like like he's trying to be polite indoors. The camera nugget is coming up to you as well. Yeah, and this nugget sitting by. He's trying to like you know his hair is all slicked back or whatever, trying to look polite and like, you know. I, I, we, we, we started in advance, we did all the appropriate people work and everything else. It's, it's, we, we're here now to basically try to take care of this business. Uh, how long would it take for us to have the audience that we're requesting for the courts to, to send soldiers over? Uh, audience, so oh, well, first of all, we would have to have an injunction placed onto the territory where the soldiers are, and then we would have to uh, requisition forces from the imperial government. That would require time in front of a judge. Uh, I would say we could start start the process in about three years. But, but, but we, 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 do you we, mind we if I process. take a look at this stack? Uh, I very much do. There's a lot of uh, private information in there, sir. Uh, of course. Well, then, I'm certain that if I'm between friends, I'm just going to very quickly slide through just some of the names at the top of them. Hmm. Do I uh, recognize... Please get away from those. Do I recognize any of these names? Uh, they're these... like like the most German, German-sounding names. It's basically just a stack of, like, citizens' names. Okay, so not like highfalutin kind of types. I mean, there's some, like, noble names mixed in there. I mean, to, to afford a lawyer, you have to have some level of influence. Indeed. Of course, of course. It's just that I've heard a precious few of these individuals that at present you're dealing with something of interest to nobility. But I'm not sure how <clears throat> ah, educated you are on that, but you dare! You, you dare come in here and question my education, sir, get out! <laughs> I believe you misunderstand me. I'm not questioning your education. Rather, I'm questioning your sense of opportunity. And I'd like to quickly sort of splash my gold tooth smile, um, sort of display myself in the kind of like, aha, I'm a cool guy kind of um, way about it and sort of furnish the fact, make the fact that I am a, a noble that might be willing to pay more than many of these clients more obvious. Okay, Captain Zedek, make an influence check. Indeed. <laughs> I am I am attempting to Captain Zedek make an influence check, but hopefully I'll do better. <laughs> Not more. <laughs> sure. You um, can't talk okay. about him like that. He's not here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, hmm. All right. Uh, give me a haggle check. Okay, sure. Oh boy. Can I assist right. him? Can so here's what I want to ask too. Yeah. Can I have Arno just casually mention, in addition to nobility supporting him, he also has contracted the assistance of the Church of Sigma, and he will sort of hold up his glove and motion to the little. You know, the little comet that's at the end of it. 
Okay. Hopefully, I'll, and a little bit of credence to that. I'll, I'll allow, like, all of, like, Baron's crying and this and Ziliana just standing there to give you a plus 20 to your Haggle test. All right. Fantastic. And I am, indeed, of higher status than him. Um, Does he have you? no blood? Um, I mean, you're you're right. Uh, well, it's, status is like nobility is is a bit different, though, right? Because I, well, of course, think... but I'm. Is he also gold status? Yes. Oh well, I mean, regardless, I am counted as higher status than him. If he doesn't have noble blood, fair. So I would be getting a plus ten uh, uh, bonus to this roll. Would you say? Uh, yeah. Excellent. Wish me luck, fam. Two degrees of success. Okay. He will. Mm, I see. I, I, I suppose it could, could look at something, perhaps, uh, possibly in the next year, then. Baron would like to pipe in. That's okay. Um, Absolutely. I would like to make a kind of grand thing. Now, I assume this one would be a haggle check. I wanted to kind of assist, but my haggle is 13, but I want to see what I can do to make it the best bonus as possible. So forgive me. Be sure to stop me if you think this is absolute bullshit. Uh, Baron will basically start going, like, we, we, we need to get the mind all sorted. and various nobles are going to be quite upset with the bureaucracy of this, of this establishment cannot at least help the minds get on their way. I mean, of course, you know all the various nobles we've helped, right? They're probably in those stocks of people there, knowing that various part of their orders cannot even be fulfilled due to the multiple years' delay. Hmm. But of course, yes, you think about Snorlof, though. There's, there's a fleet small and notable both up there north of Bogel here. Front. There's a Gunther, Gunther, uh, Gunther von Eichstein, uh, the Peter von Dunn-Glitzenstein. You definitely know of him. You probably had dinner with him. You know, the Stockwars visit him ever so often. And there's an Otter Midler as long as well. The Holland von Hollenstein as well. There's, you know, we had built him a fort way back when, about, you know, ten years ago, and now he's making another watch post there. And then the Church of Sigmar, we've done countless jobs for. The Luden von Slake, we've done done as well. Peter von der Volgen Rain. Like, all sorts of nobles we have basically done work for. And you're going to tell us that you're going to delay the stock wars for three additional years to not get their operations going, and they'll be flooded with even more people work, and they're being pretty much brought down more and more by bureaucracy to your basically and people were killed to all of these angry nobles knowing that you delayed them and that you denied them so much money because you decided to push me aside sounds like a class action lawsuit well I well I you um hmm hmm Give me an intimidate check at plus forty. <laughs> Fantastic. Here we go. One. Yeah. Your second one of the game. I will. Uh, I suppose. Yeah. Well. Uh, yes. I. Uh, Stem and liquid are, of course, uh, very. Sympathetic to the situation with the Stackwall mine, uh, we can certainly pass along the necessary paperwork for it to be reviewed by a magistrate. Uh, uh, in this case, we would need to be discussing who, who we could get the, the fast. Sadly, everyone in Altdorf is busy with all of the current situations in town and the nobles who've taken a priority. But I, I could could arrange for perhaps a third party arbitration of the current situation, uh, an initial review by a by a magistrate uh, who could perhaps uh, expedite things a lot. Oh, yes. Well, that good. sounds splendid, good sir. What magistrate did you have in mind? Well, we'd have to get a bit inventive, you see, because the, the current problem is most of the magistrates, uh, which I have no control over, keep in mind, most of the, the good magistrates are uh, in, in, in a bit of a bind in that they are booked solid, as you can see, based on the stack. And whilst you or your words have fallen on my compassionate ears, my Master Stackwall, uh, I cannot speed up the wheels above me, so to speak, unless we, we, we utilize different wheels to go around the system. This is why I am sometimes paying 
made the, the, the great amount of coin that I am. Now, I have a suggestion that might be a bit unorthodox, but it could work. Listening. So, based on the legal hierarchies of the Empire, we could appeal to a magistrate, but as I've mentioned, all of the current magistrates are occupied. However, there are a situational term of, of temporary magistrates, which are sometimes put into their positions, typically to... to oversee events or uh, uh, current current goings on in the empire now my my thought my thought is that we could perhaps have you make the journey to bogenhafen where you could put this file and I'll, I'll finish up the, the paperwork tonight but you could put this before uh, the festival magistrate now they are still recognized magistrate as far as the laws of the empire are concerned which means they can push this proceeding along outside of the legal uh, bureaucracy which would cause your your case to stall for quite some time essentially we would be using a uh, temporary judge who would be mostly there for purposes of dealing with drunkards and so forth at this uh, this Schaffenfest affair. We could use a temporary magistrate to push your case along. But as long as it accelerates the process and keeps all those nobles happy, we still have work to do. Good, 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 good. I'll, I'll get working on the paperwork tonight. Man, that well, sounds fantastic. I see why you are so highly acclaimed and so very, very reasonable. My apologies if I paid you any offense. I see that you've more than lived up to your reputation. Very good. Well, uh, give me the evening to, to look over this. I'll also need a, a gold crown of a retainer fees to begin. <laughs> of course, old friend. And I'll provide the retainer fee. I, uh, Baron kind of taps the carrion. <laughs> he goes, oh, you can take it out of the stack wall tab. Uh, you know, the oh. monthly payments in which the stack wall provides you. But you're meant to be paying me. And I will do such a thing. <laughs> you get paid? I usually paid for just being born with my last name, which is, of course, Trust Elf. Or Goldheart. Or one of those. Oh, Lord. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and uh, at this point, the, the uh, Sturman uh, barrister begins quickly pulling out paper and filling out the details. I oh, have this all ready to go. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, just take any uh, legal fees up there from the Stockwell, uh, no, Stockwell tab and everything on the, the, the family usually pays it for you. And, uh, and thank you for your kind business. Of course, of course. Good day. Good day to you, Master Stockwell, and the rest hey, of you. I should have you in the morn, and uh, Stockwell starts shuffling out. Absolutely. All right, trail following after him. That was surprisingly painful. Mm, your bureaucracy leaves something to be desired, I hate to say. I, I have a... I would most of that. I have a... I have a question. There. Yeah. Stop me, Kim. It's still more bullshit. Or does the Stackwall no. family have a bank in Alt Dwarf? Not something that I could just pull from casually, but enough to where they possibly gave me a... Give my son this money to pay the nice elves in, in, uh, in Arnold. Um, like, you can't, like, I would say that that could be built into, you know, like, when we use downtime for you guys to get gold and stuff, that might be a, a source of it, yes. You can't just pull out money, imaginary no, money no, you've made up to get equipment, so. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 that's not what I'm using it for. It's literally just to say, this is your payment here, but, like, I didn't know how to do that. Otherwise, I'm going to rotate to them going, well, uh, thanks, folks, for helping me out. Uh, I guess... You can either continue on with by the bargain hoffin that makes sure all this gets straightened out. Well, given that we've been working well enough be our side to side thus far, I believe I have my own ambitions, and of course I'm sure that an interrogator friend does as well, but I think that it might be in our best interest to pursue all of those ambitions as a group for now. I don't quite feel too comfortable in the big city alone at this phase. Hi. I like working with all of you, and I think we should stick together. You know, we're all good friends, right? And I think that we can do more things while we're all together. And I, you know, lean down, wrap them all, like, wrap my big arms around them. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> ah, yes, and you, Master uh, Arno. Well, it Arno? would be nice to keep a little bit of more insurance around in the event that we have more scuffles. I do not see such things occurring in the event of this simple mind dispute. But if you all want to come along, you're welcome to come along. Well, you know, Arno, I may just have a job opportunity for you, give or take a year or so. You've proven to be a rather competent individual. I can't say I could ask for a better guide to the Empire. At least and with that, there is a loud... You hear this, like, sound of hissing and shouting coming from across the corner near the, the bridge leading back to the, the sort of northern mainland. Oh, well, that guy's dead. Anyway... <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, bloody hell! We did have that one situation. Oh no, I believe it was some sort of bird. Uh, uh, are you involved in the pleasure cults? Excuse me. What are you talking about? Oh, come here! No, come I'm here. already. Uh, I'm already running toward the guy with the cat. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. So, so Zayana, you turn the corner, and you see an old man who is like kind of half crouched with several claw marks on his face turn to you uh, uh. he is holding a small <laughs> like mouse toy that has been knitted together oh hello uh, is everything all right? Oh, your face! Oh, uh, I, I'm gonna look for the source of the cat scratches. What, what, what I manner of beast? I almost had a. I need to find her. I need to find her. Please help me, please. Uh, I, I, no problem at all. Just t tell me what you need help with, sir. We have You're to find it. He like comes up to you, like the cut marks. To the we, we have to find it. If we what don't do find you... it, the dragon will be very angry. Dragon? dragon? Yes, the dragon will be very displeased. There's a dragon? Looking very excited. Where? Yes. Yes, the dragon. I've served her all my life. She. Oh, she not was... like a real dragon, like somebody's nickname. Aw. What? Uh, she is trust me to mark my words. I do not believe in the scaled reptilian creatures, but if there is something on this earth, this is a dragon. It It is Lady Kirsten Kotlaib, let me tell you. Okay, okay, so... But you'll help me. We have to find the cat. Of course. Yes, no problem, no problem at all. I'm here to help. Just show me where the cat went. Good, good, good. I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's Lady Kotlaib's very, very famous and imported uh, Kislev leopard kitten. Leopard kitten? Yes. Okay. She's named it Zarovich Chaikatsky. Chaikatsky? <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Sorry. Hmm. All right. Does it, does it answer to its name? Yes, Chaikatsky. Chaikatsky. Please help me, please. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Just, just. The dragon, you don't understand. She gets angry. Entire city blocks are leveled. Right. Okay. Okay. I understand. I, I, I'll help you find the kitty cat. Just, uh, just sit tight. You know, I, I think you can get somebody to tend to your wounds there. Oh, no, my wounds mean nothing. We must find the cat. You see, I'll do anything. I'll give you anything. I, 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 can't. I, I do we have resources and money? I, I, I just, we need to find the cat. Right, we'll discuss payment with my more monetarily uh, savvy friend here in a moment. I'm gonna, I'll help the, I'm gonna reach down and gently take the little cat toy from him. I'm gonna go find the cat. And like, yeah, as you take it, he like clasps both of his hands around yours. Yes, yes, please. Oh, oh, blessings upon you, ma'am. No, no problem at all. I'm gonna get up and turn to my companions, like holding the cat toy in one hand. Oh, no, what the I'm fuck I'm gonna go is find a cat. What? Wait, hold on. Hold this conversation. Ah, no, we have to talk about that weird man that we ran into later. Uh, what are you doing, Ziliana? Um. She's well, helping I... me. Peace the dragon. Hey. What he said? I'm, I'm going. I'm going to have a stroke if you don't explain yourself. 
Well, apparently there's a woman by the name of the dragon. She's very powerful, I wink at Mercurian. And she's lost her little kitty cat and she needs help finding it. Then by the cat eye, it shall be done. I will uh, move to uh, uh, <laughs> like on this most uh, a wondrous opportunity. Uh, where on earth could, are there any signs of a cat on the way through here? You can give me a challenging <laughs> perception check. I will. I am on a marginal failure. Could I make a charm animal test to just start calling out for the kitty cat? You absolutely could. <laughs> All right. Just challenging. Yeah. Actually, plus twenty. Oh, plus twenty. I'm friendly. I assume you're using the name. Oh, five degrees of success. Friendy. Yes. Uh, as as you call out the cat's name uh, with the toy. You you hear the meow, meow, as this like utterly regal white leopard print cat comes out with the haughtiest walk you've ever seen. Now that's a noble's cat of ever saw, and I at elbow Mercurian. There you is. also see that it has a little hat that's been tied on its head. <laughs> That appears okay. to be some kind of like fairly tall hat in in mocking imagery of like the czars of Kislev. <laughs> the czars of Okay, is there a picture of this cat in the book? There I is it. not. Damn it! No! <laughs> Unfair. I'm going to reach out, you know, with the little kitty toy, just here kitty, here, here, buddy. The cat approaches. Nugget is now turning to look at Baron. Uh, and then the cat. I look at Nugget and I go, You son of a bitch, you ain't doing nothing. <laughs> you sit right here. <laughs> sit. You fucking move. We're gonna have some words, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna kneel down, hold out a little I'm gonna give the cat a little scritchy with the toy. Hey buddy, you wanna go home? The cat continues the pronounced like like Foot in front of foot, power like saunter walk towards you, and then stops. Looks up, the the hat sort of jingling as you realize the tops of it have tiny bells on them, and then one paw goes to meekly push the the cat toy like meh. <laughs> this cat is more alpha than I am. I'm yeah. Gonna... <laughs> I'm going to. Please, oh, the dragons can come home. The mistress. Yes. Please, the dragons. You're gonna scare her. I'm gonna reach down and I'm going to very gently pick up the cat. Meow. Okay, it's not about to attack. Okay, I, I tuck it under my arm and it's like, all right, now where's the dragon? Oh, oh, no, no, you don't need to worry about that one. Here we are. Here we are. And he, like, steps away to the side of this alley where he pulls out this, like, massive box-like animal enclosure that is clearly, like, almost twice as wide as he is that is fitted with, like, fine rug inside and it's clearly, like, like, more money has been spent on this cat carrier than some people make in a year in this city. Jesus! In here, in here please. Right, right. I'm going to very gingerly set the cat inside. And, uh, will you need this to your mistress? I nudge Mercurian. Oh, yes. I insist we go and deliver this to the dragon post haze. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, you must not. Uh, please, please, please. Uh, and, like, as soon as the cat's in there, he immediately slams the door shut and, like, lets out this sigh of relief. Oh, you, you, you don't know what you've done. You've you've saved me, oh, Lord. Uh, all, the, all the gods above, and... Oh, thank you so much. I, I, I apologize. Uh, my name is Reynold. Reynold Vest. And, um, in, in, in service uh, to the lady. Uh, Lady right. Kirsten Gottlieb. Now, as, as I was saying, I, I, I certainly would, would pay you for this. Um, whatever it is you need, I can assist you. I, I have many contacts uh, all across here in the Empire in my long, long, long life of service to the Gottlieb's. A uh, Gottlieb? Was that the noble from the tavern? Uh, no. Okay. That was Strudeldorf. Strudeldorf. I'm so sorry. Yes, well, as a matter of fact... Uh, I'm a visiting noble from Ulthuan, and we are hoping to make some connections with our fair friends in Altdorf. Perhaps a meeting 
to, oh, I don't know, just announce that we were the ones that secured this, or perhaps some sort of, uh, let's just arrange some sort of soiree at some point. I, I, I will let, let, let her know, but she's, she's very, very occupied right now. Oh, truly, what's she up to? Purchasing dresses. A fine and noble, noble endeavor. Uh, to what end? She spends one month a year purchasing dresses here in the capital. A whole month? Yes. Nobles. I don't think I've ever seen a dress that's that expensive. Well, I don't think she's... I think she's buying dresses throughout the month to own a lengthy collection. Yes. And I assure you, you have seen a dress that expensive. It just is less expensive. Please, please, my friend, my friends. Can, how, how can I? How can I pay you back, though? Uh, so certainly, is there anything you're looking for in town? I, I could certainly point you the way. Yes. Well, as a matter of fact, we are hoping to find some. I suppose. God goodness, what would we want? I'm trying to think out of character. <laughs> uh, money. Meeting with this woman. Yeah, uh, we want. I guess meet we with... don't need him to uh, have this woman strong arm the lawyer because of uh, Baron's god rolls. Yes. <laughs> well, I say just perhaps friendship. We'd love to join her on these soirees. See some of the dresses she's selected. Perhaps even uh, point her towards some fine uh, Asser tailors that she might be able to indulge in. We're in the midst of engaging in some business dealing. And we'd very much enjoy and just knowing business with some of the local alt talk nobility. You say you have connections, perhaps you can make that happen. Yes, yes, of course, of course, of course. Uh, where are you staying right now? Uh, at the moment, we are currently off the beaten path. We are currently staying at a. What was that place? The uh, Koenigsplatz? The Goat. The, the Koenigsplatz. The, 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 the Koenigsplatz is, is a plaza. Oh, well, bloody hell, I don't know what, what inn we were staying at just yet. It's yet to be arranged. We're on a bit of a... Well, let's call ourselves a band of adventurers. Aye. Ah. The, my, 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 I suppose uh, it's... Uh, well, I need some way to stay in contact with you. Uh, I don't really know. Um, uh, I'll get your names. Yes, yes, yes. And he pulls up a little parchment and paper, holy, worthwhile paper, and scribes down your names. Yes, That's excellent. how you know he's rich. Oh, indeed, yes. And I'm going to give him my real name. Ooh. Elf. Elf. Well, it sounds like you'll be on the street of a hundred taverns. More than likely. We have some business bringing us to, a, or is it Boghaven for this ongoing festival? Bogenhofen, man. We Bogenhofen. Oh, yes, Bogenhofen, Bogenhofen for the Schaffenfest. The dragon has been interested in attending. Ah, then maybe we can meet her there. And, you know, make sure that everything went well. She gets her kitty cat all safe and sound. Yes, uh, perhaps that would be for the best. If, if you are at the Schaffenfest, well, please, please do keep an eye out. <laughs> Uh, uh, you, you, you ma ma Master Dwarf, I, I notice you have a fine hound there yourself. Aye. Very, very good. I was always fond of dogs, much more than I am of cats. He's a good boy. We won't tell her you said that. Meow. <laughs> yes. What a real Thank little you. animal. I'm smart enough not to put my finger in that. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, well then, uh, perhaps, uh, for, for, for your troubles, um, here, here, uh, do, do, like, fidgets around and pulls out two gold coins. Please take these, please. Okay, I, I take them, hand them to Mercurian. Good, good. Uh, come along, Tchaikovsky. Meow. And the man just walks off. Huh. Well, that was a cute little kitty cat. Oh, I agree. Immaculate breeding. Fantastic creature. What time is it Very according fluffy. to the sky? Uh, it, is, it is now nighttime out. Well, I didn't All really right. have a preordained thing we need to go to down by the docks. Yes. Ah, right. Sorry, I got distracted. There's so many people needing help in the city and whatnot. We cannot stop for everyone on the way. We can't? No. I'm afraid not. The town watch. It is not our job. 
Indeed, indeed. Though, oh, bloody hell, while we're here, we should at least point a little bit of an effort, maybe, <laughs> trying to find the uh, Emperor's griffin. <gasps> Are we gonna fight a griffin? No, we're not fighting oh. a bloody griffin, no! But first, uh, let's get ourselves some room and board, because I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, and I think it's time for a celebration. Now that we, uh, now that we got our first Lego loop secured. Indeed. Though, I... let us be warned, as we travel, we'll discuss this, Arno, mm -hmm. the individual we had run into. Yes, yeah, so the main reason we are heading down to the dockside, in addition to it being the most efficient, is because we do have a prior meeting set up with an individual we ran into trying to come to your assistance a second ago. Ooh. Oh. That isn't that interesting. We know uh... nothing about them so far, and that is what I aim to determine before we help them any further. Huh. All right. Mm. Seems like things are going to get interesting. Altdorf's such a wonderful city. It is quite colorful. Quite colorful. <laughs> uh, but not uh, colorful enough. We'll get to that. Now then, uh, um, onto this, uh, let's see, riverboat inn and uh, meeting with these individuals, playing dumb, trying to find what we can. Do you think this has any connection to that strange individual, your odd twin? Perhaps it does. Can't say any reason why they would want to make such a stupid signal to me otherwise. Hmm, is there anything strange about that man's body? Was he not actually related, I wonder? No, I have no siblings. Huh. Hmm. Where's the fate? You know, as long as there's nothing terribly important from that whole circumstances, I suppose we're playing it by ear. We will see what this is all about. In the meantime, let us head down to the boatman inn. <laughs> and you, you make your way, uh, crossing back onto the, the mainland and walking through the, the, the lit town, carrying on towards the boatman inn, which you know is at the end of the uh, street of a hundred taverns. As you do so, and you, you get close to, to the, the inn itself. Out of an alley, a man seems to, to run ahead of you and gets up on a, in a wooden podium uh, in front of a gathering of maybe a dozen people, some of which are like closing down shops for the night, others are just passing by. Seems to be the skinny fellow dressed in rags and clutching a scroll. <laughs> and you see he's like standing on this podium looking around wild eyed uh okay. so he's just standing there in the middle he's clutching onto a scroll yep what on earth is that man doing uh what do I I'll take a perception at this uh you could like there's nothing special he's just standing there looking kind of crazed up up on top of this podium does he just look like, does he like, he said he's a scraggly man. Is there yes. anything strange about his clothes? Is he like tattered clothes? Tattered, yeah, exactly. He, he like skinny, like dressed in rags, basically. Anything strange about the scroll? Well, he's starting to unfurl it. And then he begins speaking. I see darkness gathering at the last house of joyfuls. All right. Hey, hey what weird magic is about to happen? <laughs> I'm going to make a perception with my second sight. It's just, yeah. Oh. Baron's ignoring him and just keep plodding along. Hey, man, yeah, we don't got these where I'm from. That's true. Like, don't worry about him. You told us. Uh, perhaps. It's just perhaps a bunch of crazy really people. bad feeling about all this. Oh, no, you just mean, ignore him. What's a bunch no, of no, no, no. Something. Beware. <laughs> Beware for shadows over Bogenhafen, stir. Um, Bogenhafen. Oh, crazy I, dog. I. Someone's and, got and beloved more resplendent investments of green stands astride Sigma's great river. This is a green uh, uh, Mercurian. As, as you're hearing this, you like you don't notice so much any magical uh, effects here, but you do like you feel something almost oppressive over you in general. Like as you're trying to focus to the winds of magic, just like you kind of have this momentary sickness. Oh, Yay! I see death on the Reich, and I despair. 
Death on the right. What did the moment? What on earth are you talking about? For the stained hand guides the once mighty lord, and this power behind the throne curses us all. Power behind the throne curses us all. Stained hand. Why do they have to talk in riddles? You know. And at this point, he turns to Baron, who's still walking away. <laughs> the horned rat then claims the broken king atop his throne of lies. Lord the white Baron stops. Leaving our empire in ruins. Tremble in fear, ye mighty. The end times. Come. Bloody hell, I hope not. This is dreadfully pessimistic. Where are you getting this information from? At that, he seems to, like, smile and begins, like, to calmly, like, like wrap up the scroll. <sighs> Hold on, I asked you a question. He sort of, oh, 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 no. I wouldn't believe any of that. I just what? showed her, put on for coin. Keep seeing coming pilgrims, happy. <laughs> Once mighty you. lords, white walls fallen. No idea, mate. I just say whatever pops in my head. If you liked it, you fancy buying me a pint? What? You never know thought I'll I'll you to ignore oh, right. him. And I told you, high watch, keep going. I continue down the tower and I'm just leaving them. Yes. Uh, I uh, still have a bad feeling. Yes. Something, something. I don't know what it is. I got this feeling. Yes, me too. Consider becoming a thespian instead of a charlatan, good sir. You've talent, and I oh, will thank you. move down the uh, move down the road after our dwarf companion, looking behind my back occasionally. Yeah. I was just with Baron because that's that's what he's supposed to do. He doesn't yeah. do the doomsayers unless they're Sigmar sponsored doomsayers. Yes. Why? Why on earth do you just have people doing that in the middle of your streets? Crazy folk. Lost pocket loud like pipes up. Well, you see, uh, they're entertainers, just like me. So very entertaining. Yes, but why don't they tell a story or a drama or something, or learn an instrument? People You're rather talented. Kind of like a story. He just made it up. Seemed a little uh, too ominous for my liking. With one, we don't give out portents. They're nearly willy. We tend to pay attention when they give them. They're not given by, uh, no offense, but street performers. Just be sure to ignore them. All a bunch of crazy folk, and as you've just seen, a bunch of shot. And uh, with don't believe you, what they see. Uh, you see, you, you see the boatman in, uh, which is just at the, the down the street of a hundred taverns close to the river. You see high-masted ships to smaller barges and houseboats all lined around here. The boatman in is one such establishment. It's along the embankment. It is actually built into some smaller docks. Uh, and has like a, a street based door entry point, which is currently open and inviting. Well, uh, our imminent dooms aside and our infinite fortune behind us, let us move on, move on, shall we? Aye, we shall. Let's go. And let's head into this tavern. Yeah, you, you walk into this this large tavern space, and almost as soon as you, you all start stepping in, you can see the, the, the building is uh, probably got about a dozen to 15 people like spread out over various tables. There's a, a long bar at the end that is being tended to by a woman who seems to be preparing drinks. Uh, you can also see that there is a, a secondary door that connects to a, kind of a dock. There's a section of the inn, which is clearly built above water. There's a section of about 15 by 15 feet that is actually exposed uh, and leads down to the water below and just has sort of like some fencing around it. And right beside that uh, the, that sort of hole in the ground that gives the, the entire uh, boatman in this sort of like sound of, of rushing water from the river beneath it, you see Yosef who sort of raises, Ah, hello! Come, come sit! Yes, greetings, Yosef. <clears throat> come on, friends, come sit! I got us a table! Arno is going to let the other people go for that. 
uh, for that table. Arno is going to keep an eye out, however, for the other fellows. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll, um, seeing kind of Arno do this, I think I'll, uh, take my place alongside him. Okay, here, let's, um, do this. Ooh. Wow, a map. A map. We get a fancy map that sort we of get shows a map everything. Again. Whoa. Yeah. It's the map, it's the map, it's the map, it's the map. So yeah, you can see that, that Joseph is sort of sitting sitting at this table. Lost Pocket then comes up as well, joining you, Baron, and Ziliana, if you're sitting there. Uh, before, so, yeah. uh, I'm trying to rewind time a little bit, if that's okay. No, no. Yeah, I, yeah, wanted, yeah. I wanted to invite everybody into a huddle. Okay. He's like, I'll get everybody into, into a huddle, into a huddle. Quickly, quickly. Uh, team huddle, team huddle. Like, like, look at you, Sam. Oh, huddle? You don't need to hear this. Just, just, just the core. So, well, let's try your best to secure room and board and get the bed. Make some dinner. Maybe get some drinks. Let's not set the place on fire. Let's not try to get anyone shot. Let's try not to murder anybody. Let's try not to steal from anybody. Just have a good time. So I have a normal time and a tavern for once. Arno is internalizing that this is coming from Baron. <laughs> on a day, on very best. All right. I, what? I promise I won't start anything. I know, no, no declaring someone's cheaters. No shooting people with crossbows. We're bloody no trying to set things on fire. And you, you shot me! That's true, I understand. And that's why we're having the huddle. We've learned, we need to learn from the problems of the past and try to make a better future by not trying to burn this fucking tavern down. Well, I think I can resist the temptation when we're inside of the capital of the Empire where watchmen will have us in shackles and shift up to some far off of bleak. I'm so glad you understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into it. Just okay, ready? Team in? And Baron puts his hand in the middle. What is this? <laughs> I put my hand on his. Uh, yeah, fine. Arno does not do this. He will instead stare at the hands. Well, put it on! Oh no, at this point you're obligated. Oh, me being the individual who stayed hell last time, but sure. Come on, Nugget. Nugget. Woof. Woof. Paw, 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 cap, <laughs> Alright, go team. Alright, everyone into the tavern. And now yeah, the current team. Yeah, so um, I'll let uh, Mercurian and Arno where you want to uh, put yourselves. Yeah, we're, we're looking around, basically, for the individuals we talked to previously, or the fellow I talked to recently. Yeah, they, they're, they're not in here, for sure. Right, we will simply take... Uh, we will take position, I would suggest maybe like at this table here, so we're within spitting distance of everyone else, but Didn't know. they say to expect a boat in the evening? Yes, but we're meeting here first. No, oh, fair enough then, and perhaps it behoove us to have at least somewhere where we can see outside. I don't suppose they take tables that have a balcony. Well, there's over here, the boats aren't coming in anywhere near over here, are they? No, no, no. It's just the, this is basically like a um, the, the section to the east has sort of like windows that look out over the River Reich. Right now, it's particularly beautiful because it's just all of the like lights and tiny pinpricks of lights that are still active on ships as they're moored, or even a few of them that are daring to move down the river at night. Mm, well, I see. Maybe we'll get a chance at seeing uh, incoming company over here. And I'm going to move over, and I will take a seat over here. Okay. Or maybe actually over here is where I'll probably have the better view. I was going to sit down or stand up, excuse me, uh, right near there. Absolutely. And watch okay. the door. You know, it may behoove you to sit down, at least act natural. It is fine. We may just be expecting someone. And we will. So. Mm -hmm. Very well. I'll be okay. just glancing out at this wonderful view. Absolutely. Um, with that, Joseph sort of looks over to you, Baron, as you sit down with Ziliana and Lost Pocket. Oh! 
Are those uh, friends of yours not going to join us? Oh, no, they did. They got some business of the wrong. But, uh, come on, just keep the drinks coming, Don. It's a celebration team. All right. Get... Uh, Una, four bottles, please. And, like, the bartender nods and proceeds to pull out four bottles of wine. <laughs> we'll start off with a bottle each and see how it goes from there. Also, my, uh, my oh, friend like here's looking for work. Oh, looking for work. Well, uh, Lost Pocket looks up. Ah, 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 I'd be looking for work. Uh, I hear you've got a boat. And like you said, oh, of course I got a boat. I got the best boat around. The Barabelli, she's a beaut. I really hope you take her along. And uh, I'm just hoping that we can, you know, take a nice little celebratory drink, get some food, and then clock out for the night. Oh, we'll be, we'll be done in the morning, I'll tell you what. <laughs> uh, so, so so you, uh, Miss Liliana, was it? Huh? Uh, yes. How did you end up with this little shit here? <laughs> oh, come on. Baron's a, Baron's a good man. And, well, um, here, uh, he's got business with my charge. He's sitting over there, the fancy golden one. And so I'm kind of along for the ride, and I think we're best friends. Hey, good friends. Well, that's good. You know, Baron and I used to know each other from way back when got into a lot of trouble together. That's before I had the bear belly to, to keep me keep me grounded. And by that, I mean off the ground. <laughs> I live on the boat, so it's kind of a funny joke, you see. <laughs> <laughs> that is a funny joke. <laughs> I like this one. She's nice. Uh, and you, mm. uh, Mr. Ms. L Lost Pocket, was it? That's right, that's right. I uh, I met them just about a day ago. They saved me from a uh, from from well, someone with a gun. Gun. Hey. Uh, I our last trip through a last trip through a tavern ended up with my charge nearly getting shot, but he didn't. Oh well. Uh, he <laughs> loud, and the man was a cheat. You know how those sorts of things go. You're telling me you never been shot at in a bar before? Is that, oh. is that abnormal? It's, it's standard fare here in the Empire. Okay. Like, you, remember the, you remember the time there was that one lad with a blunderbutt who pretty much pelted the entire walls with holes after we after he thought that we cheated him after we got five gold crowns from him? I mean, the funny part was we did. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so good, so good. I miss the, those times. But have the drinks arrived yet? Oh yeah, yeah. At this point, the, uh, the the bartender has like walked by and placed them. I wish to consume. Uh, you may uh, give me a consume, consume alcohol. Consume check. alcohol. Consume. 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 Okay, I'll... I got a marginal success. All right, I'm gonna have me a little dwinky as well. Sure. Do we continue the Ziliana can't can't handle alcohol? <laughs> Which is Jeez, so weird because I, I do have a high top. One hundred. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, high-ish. Uh, just challenging. Yep. Let's see. Oh, right on the dot. Thirty-seven right and thirty-seven. Yeah. Yo, this is really good. Pandora <laughs> says that she rolls a ninety-six versus twenty-nine and kind of starts falling asleep immediately on the table. Oh, that was honest. <laughs> I know halflings. They they've got a they've got a love of drink, but sometimes they just can't handle it. But I like this one. She's a good sort. So right. She's making her way to the shopping fest, is she? Aye, aye. Seems so. Can't the... cut... Oh, sorry. No, you got go go. I'm gonna. Do... Oh no. Just... Uh, she can't quite stop talking about it. That's all I was gonna say. Oh well, I can understand why. It's uh, it's a big deal. Have have you have you heard? Have uh, got any of the the uh, the bills for it? Bills? Oh, here, and he sort of like reaches into his pocket and pulls out this like kind of crumpled paper. Here you go. Uh. 
Yeah, whatever the hell that said. There we go. <laughs> there you go. I <laughs> love that. Okay. Let's let's do a call out of Foundry that does a text version and the image version. So when the oh, image version goodness. has impossible font, you may read the text version. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Council and burgers at Bogenhofen announced that the grand opening of the annual Schaffenfest will be held on the town meadow this mid oh, German. Mitterfrill Day. Mitterfrill Day. The fair will last for three days to the hours of daylight by gracious permission of His Grace Graf Wilhelm von Sappenheim and His Royal Highness Grand Duke Leopold of Midland. And a, gr a grand joust will be held between the knights and squires of their two households. And in addition, uh, there'll be a livestock market and the traveling fair. We have to watch the jousting! Well, you could probably participate in it. <gasps> They're taking participants? And we could always try to get you in. I mean, we could always ask. <gasps> Liliana's eyes just light up. It's just a fair amount of coin, too. We could, we could figure it out. I, I mean... If, if you're looking to come with me, I've got room on the Barabelli. In fact, I'm even looking for some people to, to help out around on the boat. I'm uh, looking to pay, pay pretty well, two silver shillings a day. I'm so glad you're very convenient, because we're, we're going to be heading that way fairly soon. In fact, now even. So, long as you have room for me and my friends, I'll be happy to work on your boat for pay. Of course, and if any of you want to, to pick up the, the wheeze of the boatman, I'm there for you. All right, time out, time out, every player. Uh, at this point, with uh, with Joseph's offer, if any of you wish to immediately enter the boatman career uh, for free, <laughs> you can actually do so. Uh, I'm putting this in your heads now. You will be able to decide by next session. Boatman. Whoa. All right, That's Nugget, right. now's your chance. <laughs> Nugget's <Finally>. entering the <laughs> boatman career. <laughs> To you, I mean, boatmen would probably make better use of uh, ranged weapons, uh, Zorin. <laughs> I, I am stuck uh, on my path. The rat catcher will stay. The way of the rat catcher. I do think it's neat though that the adventure actually calls out like, if anyone wants to be a boatman, hey, you can do it for free right yeah, now. Yeah, but you don't have to lose the dog. You don't lose your trappings from changing. Oh no, that's I'm I'm sticking with them. <laughs> And so as, as this is going on, um, Arno, you're paying attention to the door, right? Correct. A, a man enters and proceeds to, like, he, he's a tall, gaunt man, saunters in. He has aquiline features and a deep scar on his left cheek. Everyone in the inn kind of turns as this fellow, uh, like, enters, uh, and he, like, seems to reply to these stares with a sneer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Quite a colorful individual. Uh, he proceeds to walk over to a table in the corner where he looms above the two patrons who are sitting there just long enough for them to get up and quickly move to a different table before he sits down. Oh my Let's god. Uh, and this wasn't the man we met in the alley, is it? Uh, no, this this man you have not seen before. All right. Uh, could I make an intuition to see if this is the person we are meeting, or has the air of someone who's supposed to be in this area? Um, sure. Okay. I'll do the same, or otherwise assist. Typical. Baron will drink. Challenging. Oh uh, yeah, Baron, give me another drink of alcohol. Very good. I win. Baron continues drink. You finish off lost pockets. Good. I got no idea. I'm drink. I'm 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 enjoying this wonderful view. Yeah, you're looking out at the like. The, okay, this, this is probably normal in human just, culture. Just just to make sure for audio people, so they know what we rolled. Uh, Minus uh, three. What, yeah, Iron Earl, what did you get? I got a thirty-four, which matched. Yeah. I got a thirty-six out of forty for alcohol testing, so I did not good. And Kyrian. Uh, I've got an uh, 86 versus 55 for minus three degrees of success. Awesome. Um, and so, Arno, um, you recognize that this person is just here for a fight. I see. Good. Uh -oh. Good thing I didn't go up to him. Um, I guess the term 
like the term that would be utilized here, and this is actually a career in Warhammer Fantasy, this is a protagonist. Mm. And not in the story sense. This is someone who basically shows up and is a bully and wants to fight people. How does that make money? From just the shit that he takes? Uh, y yes, basically. Uh, oh my God. A protagonist would evolve uh, basically up to an assassin at higher levels. Holy so. crap. Oh, These are oh. literally people who just like come in to kick the shit out of people. Terrific. Well, at this point, he has sat down and then like waves and says, Brandy! And the uh, the barkeep begins uh, prepping prepping some some brandy, uh, but before she can even move, he has stood up again and walked towards the bar, where he grabs the bottle and tosses a bunch of coins that scatter behind the the bar onto the ground behind the barkeep, and then Boom. he walks back. Oh, look at his friend. Hey, look at that guy. Yeah. <laughs> shit, shit, let's, let's not. Let's not. Let's do. We don't want to. We don't want to start anything tonight. Oh, absolutely. Oh, don't he wishes start he could start place. something. Let's uh, let's sing our famous drinking song. You know, you gotta remember the barley roll one. Wow, the bar, that's been ages. All right, all right. You you start. I be drinking, drink the barley roll. We are drink it up. We drink it all the drink, barley drink, roll, we drink, get so drink, very drink, drunk. Drink, drink. The barley roll is good to us, we love it so much. And we'll drink all the barley roll a lot. And then we just God, do drink, drink, drink. drink. Across the bar, we're here and she's like, God, it sounds like someone's killing a cat. And I look over, and I see it's Baron. Ah, oh, I see. La, la, like, la, 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 <laughs> la, 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 la. And drink and drink the barley roll. And then he's just, he's just singing away. Can I do a performance or something to... Um... Yeah, of course. Excellent. Uh, I actually don't really... I don't think I actually have any particular <laughs> skill. No, I have entertain. It's 13. Yeah. Entertain, absolutely. <laughs> Let's Hell see. Yeah. Do I get any challenging 20, if I actually plus sing 20, something? Sure. Okay. And we go... And we switch to... And, like, and we roll me bully boys. I got oh. a 12. And Come everyone's and starting to like, gold. like chant sing. And there's like clearly this like just air of, of niceness that's going on in here. And everyone's having a good time. And just destroying like, his negative energy. Just. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and as this has gone on, um, like Mercurian and Arno, I assume you're not joining in the revelry uh, so much as just taking it in. But I'm, uh, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Arno, you noticed that the, the door that leads out to the dockside entrance has opened and two figures have entered in, a man and a woman, who are these massively tall fellows with weapons at their sides who have come in and have closed the door behind them and now stand awkwardly in front of the door. That's but the, the, the singing continues around as though people haven't quite realized this yet. Question. Yes. You know what I'm about to ask. Can I mm -hmm. intuit if they are the individuals who are coming our way, or are they simply here to also cause problems? Um, you can give me an intuit check, sure. There we go. Here, Joe, you're like upside down on the map. 30 you know. versus 34. Marginal success. These are not, these are not the people. These are clearly people who've been hired for a very, these are bodyguards. You can tell, like, they, they're, they're hired muscle. Uh, and as the, the chanting dies down, Baron, and you finish the song, oh, and you was like, oh, this was great. That was, you know, it's been a while since. And as though, as though something were to cut through the din of the, the post-song joy. I say, chaps, what a quaint establishment. <laughs> as a group of four enter through the main door. That was a really good, uh, Good fucking Resident Evil villain voice you did just then, Thurston. <laughs> oh, 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 wait. <laughs> My compliment. You have no fucking idea. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid. Here comes the fun. Two, two fellows come in in front, clearly dressed in noble attire. Um, and as the, the first one comes, the other one, like, 
like turns and begins swaggering over to the bar together. And as they're moving over to the bar, you, uh, Arno, also notice that two more uh, hired muscle, again, these six feet tall juggernauts, have taken position by the other door, which they have closed behind them. <laughs> the larger of the two new individuals looks over at the bar. <laughs> two of your finest beverages, landlord! <laughs> So, based on what I understand, what are the? There are two exits, yes. Yes. And they have both been boarded up and blocked by these individuals. Uh, got not boarded up, but they've been like closed. Which, from the side door, the the one that leads off onto the sort of the adjacent dock, that that was normal. That one is usually kept closed. They opened it, came in, and then closed it behind them. But the main door, which is usually left open, um, they came in, and the two uh, two sort of muscles closed it as they came in, and they're just standing in front of the doors. Uh, Arno's going to see an opportunity to possibly determine what the hell is going on here, and he's going to lean to Mercurian for a second. Mercurian. Yes? I'm going to go talk with those bodyguards over there. I'm going to determine what this is all about. Do with keep this? your weapon handy. Well, I always do. Have no fear, friend. Be right behind you if trouble rises. Yeah, just stay here for now. Deal with them running distance. Mm -hmm. uh, just from a cursory examination, these guys came in with these guys. It looks like these guys are all together. Yeah, it looks like the, these these two sort of giggling noble fellows appear to to be with these two groups of, of guards. Um, Anything maybe on their person that I could try to identify them? Maybe Laura Heraldry? On the uh, uh, nobles? Yeah, sure. All right, excellent. Challenging. Of course, yeah. Figuring these guys aren't walking around with their, like, giant shield that has their crest on it, but... Uh, well, you know, it was a nice thought. I think I failed at uh, every role I've... I've they, uh, are, they are they human nobles. Um, but what you see is they they come up uh, to the bar and they've yelled, like, uh, two of your finest beverages, landlord. Uh, they immediately look at the two people at the bar... And one of them, like, walks up to the, the person closest to the bar. And very loudly, oh, You filthy commoner, out of my way! I want to sit here! And the, the man at the, the bar kind of, like, nods and gets up and walks around. Hmm, charming. Oh, look, I've, I've done it. I've, uh, look, look, Jacob, I've got it so that we don't have to sit with, with any of these, uh, these smelly oiks. Baron will call oh, the peasant good, over. Good. And we're like, hey, you're going to come sit with better company with us, friend. Come, sing and be merry. And I'll basically try to invite him over. That one peasant that got shoved away. Go, come, come, we got an extra drink for you. Uh, he, like, looks over at you and gives, like, this this shake of his head. Like, no, don't, don't, don't fucking do this. Like, like you don't, <laughs> don't do this. And as as that goes on, the the fellow uh, to the south sort of like turns to you, Baron. Like, <laughs> what did you just say to me? What did you say about me, friend? Baron will turn away, oh, no. knowing that he never spoke to him, and continues to drink. And I and he looks to his friend, going, "You might want to leave right now." Just as like, uh, there's no one to go look at the door. What about go to the corner what about that whole and steal me? Start my bar fight. And this man comes up and takes a seat at your table. This this nobleman who has now come over with a pint of brandy. Uh, Thurston, just for clarity's yes. sake, I'm what Baron? Were you talking to the guy who got pushed off by the nobleman? To so the guy who got pushed off. I was talking yes. to the peasant. Yeah. Yeah. He he has just interpreted like you the better company comment and now has fucking come over. Hi, hello, good to meet you. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> oh, I'm definitely joining you. <laughs> now, now then, what, what, said, what were you saying? Drink. What were you saying, little dwarf man? <laughs> oh, it's fine to better company over here. 
Wish I could have far better conversations than being alone at a bar. But I'm so glad you're here to join us. They say they're good company. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay, and then, like, the other guy comes. You guys need to watch what you say. <laughs> I am watching this, like, one hand, I'm like, oh, boy. Yeah, this is barren. On the other hand, I'm like, man, Empire Nobles are, like, what? You guys are like living like rats. What the fuck is this? <laughs> oh, just you wait until you see the brothels, Mercury. Yeah. <laughs> As the nobles come in, they're like, hey, I'm Bearden. It's all in such an absolute place where they need both of you. Like, what brings <laughs> you around the desk cool side of the table? <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, Jacob von Katzerinite Reich. And the other one is like, who? I am Georg von Ostfren. <laughs> Baron goes, who? <laughs> well, of course, our names are, 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 are certainly too, too typical for your small brain to comprehend. And they look at each other. <laughs> I mean, I've never heard of you before. <laughs> oh, of course, of course not. I mean, we, we would be heard in your, your, your little circles. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate, because I've been dealt with many nobles building various of their forts. I mean, oh. uh, did, did, can, can you afford forts at all? Like, your stone work? <laughs> we can afford whatever we want. Like, this, 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 this fine swill that they have here. Have you, have you, sir, tell me, sir, tell me, tell me. Have you ever played Brandy Bounce before? <laughs> it's quite fun. Oh, yeah, not even, only with people who are competent enough to play it, though. And, like, the, the one to the south sort of looks up at you, Baron, and the his friend. Oh, they've never played it. They've never played it before. Oh, well, we should show them how to play it. Oh, yes, yes, good, good, Georg. We should show them how to play it. Yes, yes, yes. I... Has Arno gotten anything out of these fucking bodyguards yet? That's yeah, yeah. We're going to cut to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Arno, you've walked over to Yeah, can I, can I have my token write it again, please? Thank you. There you go. It's uh, for, for reference, it's control mouse wheel. Weird. Oh. I haven't been doing that, but that works for me. I think it's also, yeah. Uh, hold up. God, I can't scroll around the map for some reason. Yeah, if you click your token and hold shift and then your scroll wheel, then you can rotate it. Yeah. I'm not trying to move. I'm trying to, like, look around the map, but it's not letting me, so fuck it. All right, so basically Arno has gone to up yep. to the two of them, and he is... How, about how tall are they? Around, around Arno's height, right? Like six feet, yeah. At like minimum six feet each. Uh, I out height. I out. I out height them by one inch. <laughs> Very good. Look here. Add, add, add fifty to my intimidation score. No. Uh, Arno is going to just sidle up in front of them and give them both a very stern look. Watching. Can I just like? I just want to step in front of them and see how they react to my presence for a second. Yeah, sure. Uh, they seem to uh, they seem to just look at you. In, in what kind of way? Are they just like, are they assessing me? Or are they simply just like, you are here, we are looking at you kind of thing? Like, yeah, very much, you me. are here. What are you going to do about it? Good evening. What might you two be doing here? We're, uh, we're watching the scenery. Arno's gonna noticeably turn his head towards the two wild drunk nobles. <laughs> yeah. Is that an element of the scenery? That would be part of it, yes. Mm. Well, whatever you are doing, would you please mind stepping back from the door? I don't think we'll be doing that. No, I don't think we'll be doing that. May I ask why? Because our masters would very much like this scenery to stay where it is. Um. Hey, uh, I'm going to leave this to the party. Hey, guys. What should I do for this? Should I use my suave or should I use my menacing? Menacing. 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 Mm, I would say suave, not because it's more likely to work, because it's more likely to not get your head kicked in. But menacing is probably more likely to work. I think it's more to your character. Or you're just like, I agree with that too, yeah. Yeah. 
Because I would like to learn why they won't let us out. That's the important part, and my charm is much higher than my intimidate is. Ah, human. Prejudiced against human, I see. Oh no, their prejudice reads anyone their employers don't like. Gotcha. Oh, they haven't met me yet. How can they not like me? It's fair. That's racist. Uh, I'll tell you what. I will do a charm on the... The 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 lady, the lady body. Okay. Please, if you don't mind telling me, why is it that they would not lock the scenery to depart? Seems a little unusual, don't you think? Uh, charm challenging. Uh, yeah, challenging. It's gonna be an opposed test. So. Thirty-six. Okay. Two successes. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So oh, she, uh, so he got a 36 versus 52, and the bodyguard then got a 76 versus 30. So there is uh, a wide, a wide array of difference between the success levels. So the, the bodyguard kind of like shrugs her shoulders a bit and sort of like leans in, like some kind of camarade. Are, uh, are you are you familiar with slumming it? I've had to do so for a great many years now. Sorry, I mean nobility slumming it. Uh, no, I can't say I have. Why don't you tell me? So, some young toffs howl in packs. The higher out people like us make sure they don't have to face any consequences. It's all good fun. Just uh, give some churlish commoners a bit, a, a bit of a different view of the world for a few minutes. See, so they're here for fun, yeah? They're not gonna cause any sort of trouble. Exactly. Well, but if someone tries to cause trouble for them, well, that's why we're here. I see. I'll make it a little bit easy on you. I was going to kind of look far across the bar at that guy. Mm hmm. He seems like a real rough type. You may have to uh, get in the position if they start aiming his way. We'll be ready. Thank you for that. Go sit. Hopefully this is all over soon. Of course. Uh, just mind who you bring them up against. The two fellas they're talking to now. You cause trouble for them and, well, uh, I appreciate your concern, but... Arno will then put his hand on the handle of his truncheon, showing off again the little Sigmar Comet on his glove. I will use this, and we will have a good tussle. Good day. And then we, we cut back to the, the two fops at the table. <laughs> Jacob, 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 let me, let me show this woman how brandy mouth works. Would you like to know that? I think I would like to approach. Baron leans his in to her like, don't play. It's a fool's game. It's... Uh, I, well, I'm afraid I don't really have a lot of time for that now. I'm just oh, trying to... That's okay. That's okay. You don't actually get to play, because, cause, you know, you're, you're not... No. <laughs> yes, yes, very, very good, very good. No, no, no. You see, we play the game. <laughs> let, let me show you how it goes. Like, All Baron, right. Well, Baron if you're then... providing entertainment, I'll watch. He's like, like, oh, no, 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 He Baron will intensely... Oh, go ahead. The Baron, but as he begins, goes like, oh, that's neat. Baron then turns to Zillyana, completely ignoring them, and goes, no, 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 how you been like at the trip so far? And the trip's been nice. As you, oh, yeah, you turn yeah, and yeah, have this, nice. um, the nobleman proceeds to gulp down both pints of brandy. I sneeze yeah. on him. <laughs> And like you, you turn and see this, and he's just got this like big smile, and then he vomits all over Zoya, uh, like just covering you in brandy and other stomach contents, and like coughing it at the ground, like leering down. And the other fellow across from you is now pointing at you, Zilgana, and laughing. <laughs> 
at that! That was some spectacular bounce scale! Look at that! All over that! <laughs> Ziliana is going to stand up very slowly, her full 6'10 elven height, leering down. <laughs> That's funny, friend! And I'm going to pick him up. <laughs> <laughs> And Baron's like, oh shit, we're doing this. He's scrambling for his crossbow. He's <laughs> like, oh shit, oh shit. I'm going to pick him up and I'm going to wrap him in a bear hug. <laughs> oh no. The party friend. And I said, a lot of down. things happen at once. <laughs> <laughs> so, first off, Mercury. Yes. I... You're making your way. You get to about there. Yeah, uh, before the hug occurred. Oh, boy. Uh, immediately. There is, like, quick movement from, from the, the, the ones at the door who start stepping towards. Like, the, 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 the fat one, uh, Jacob, turns and looks in horror. Oh, the smelly oink is touching you! <laughs> and you've, you, like, initiated this hug. And Baron, you, you have this moment of, oh, no, we're doing... And uh, with that, uh, this this other fellow has pushed his chair down, and the protagonist comes towards you, and like forcibly oh, pushes lock pocket on the ground, and walks over to her chair, and stares at you, Ziliana, and just gives this like. Wouldn't if I were you, pea brain. How about you just sit there and enjoy yourself? Me? You're, you're talking to me? Yeah. And like <laughs> the, the the other two are just like, oh, yes, look, look, oh, the, the, the country bumpkins are fighting against one another. <laughs> yes, quite, quite lovely. <sighs> Listen, friend, I'm not here for a fight. I'm here to relax, have me a drink before we get back on the road. Go back to your table. What was that? Go back to your table. Oh, God. Please. Baron is Han soloing, aiming the loaded crossbow <laughs> under the table <laughs> at the protag, and he's like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> I'm like, like, you can see the bead of sweat going down Joseph's face as he looks at you, and Nugget's like getting into like attack position. Can Nugget also have a little tiny crossbow? <laughs> yeah. uh, and then like Georg the noble who you hugged and now have gotten all sorts of this like violent filth all over his, his noble attire is backed off and staring at me. <laughs> or staring at you, Zillia. You smell like how dare you! I quite smelly. Wonder how that happened. Um, and like, as as though like taking in everything during this entire like engagement, Mercury and moving up the bodyguards, moving up, uh, Jacob, the, the fatter of the two nobles, has now quickly downed both of his brandies and lets out a similar stream across the table of filth towards you and begins coughing. <laughs> And, uh, like, you get a little... Again? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, um, and, like, splashes on the table, and he starts coughing. <laughs> like, like, I was like, it's not the time for another brandy bounce! And you hear Jacob, like, it's the time for brandy bounce! I'm, I'm gonna move his friend in front of me. And, like, <laughs> yeah, sure. Do you want to, uh, let's see here. What? As, in as she's doing this, just to get this kind of cleaned up, yep. I... Baron's telling his friend to pick up uh, uh, our bartered friend to say to, to take us oh, to the yeah. corner. I'll wait from you. We'll get out of here. All right, right. Just to move him right. away. But, Just challenging? Know. Uh, yeah. All right, let's see. Three degrees of success. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you... I'm on my honor as a knight, I'm not letting this slide. It's just a kite shield. And the this the protagonist starts to turn and come around towards you, Ziliana. I oh. gave you a warning. What love do you have for these two? Huh? And then he punches you. 
Yeah, right. Oh, come on. <laughs> Can I perhaps attempt to intercede yes. at some instant? I mean, absolutely. Like, like, like he, he's come, he's yeah. come around. You see him coming around. Yeah, I feel like I am going to take a step if, if I can before the punch is thrown. Attempt to take a step here. Twenty-four gold. Um. You you can tell that your your words of gold have nothing on Oh, this I'm hand. not asking for him. I'm I'm also standing between them to some extent. And I'm addressing these two. Uh, how they have can we turned resolve to this because we can't we can't narratively declare right now. Uh I mean, at this point, what's what's basically happening is Mercurian has rushed up uh, in an effort to get in between and says, like, 24 gold as this guy has come around and, like, goes to clock Zillia. That is kind of the timing on this. Uh, because Mercurian has rushed up into this. Yeah, I'm hoping to maybe, like, try to intercede and just kind of, like, you know, hopefully block the punch to some extent. It's, it's going to give a penalty. Uh, but he is going to basically get a, a flat attempt here. Uh, Ziliana, you are you are quite surprised by this. So this isn't an opposed roll, but it's not. He's not getting the bonus because there is an intercession here. Oh, and he fails terribly. So what a his, swing. Like, his punch goes completely wild. Technically, he shouldn't even roll. Swing and a miss. Um, yeah, he like his punch goes wild and doesn't even hit Mercurian. Uh, and then the, the two the two noble toughs kind of back up, and like they're still like coughing up their 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 filth and like staring. <laughs> um, keep moving. Oh no no no! This fellow is now like looking at you, but also looking uh, looking at you, Zillian, and looking at Mercurian side Mercury, to side, please. and like puts up both of his fists and is like, "All right, let's see how it goes." All right, McCurry, and uh, that's actually where we're going to call it for today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, yeah. this is perfect because now we get. To... No, Arono, this is perfect because now we can spend all of next session having a very long and arduous brawl. True. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to burn oh, down every tavern we see, whether it's every one or not. fucking tavern. You have you have no idea when I read this encounter the first time, I was like, okay, so there's a few things that could go wrong here. Actually, there's a lot of things that could go wrong here. And to be honest, my greatest fear was Mercury in joining those two chuckle fucks and making fun of all the commoners. I, I'm, very, I'm very glad he didn't go that I was way. I consider that, but I'm like, you know, I'm I tend to talk a lot. I, I don't want to drown out this scene, and I have a mission, so Mercurian will only intercede if it's necessary. And then I tried to intercede before things got to this point, and by the time I got there, all, but all of my ability to defuse the situation seemed to have passed. <laughs> we, you are not going to be able to defuse the situation. It is it is white boy wasted hour. I, I, I might have had a chance. I, might, I know how to talk to nobles. Who are you? Me. Hey. Well, Maybe, but I don't know how to talk to antagonists or protagonists. I think he's an antagonist now. Oh. Yeah, he certainly is. Try talking to Pi Brain sometime. Ah, uh, well, True. you know, you'll get to do that next week. Not, no, not next week. Ah, uh, I week next week. The week after next week. Yeah. Well, that'll be the next fantasy episode. So, dun, yeah. Dun, dun. <laughs> well then, with that, everyone. We'd like to say thank you all so much for joining us for the episode three of Warhammer Fantasy. Hope you all had an excellent time with all of us. Thank you, Mr. Aaron Dale, for playing Arnold Fleischman. Thank you for having me. And if anyone wishes to find me anywhere else, you can find me on Twitter at Aaron Dill. And I have been playing Baron Stackwall, the Rat Catcher. And uh, thank you so much to Speaker Day for playing Mercurian. Yes, I am uh, Speaker D. You can find me on Twitter at Super Snake Kick on YouTube as Speaker D. And you can find me in the Dark City. Thank you so much, Odoroshi Rider, for playing Ziliana. Hello, yes. Uh, I'm Odo Odoroshi. You can find me at Odoroshi Rider on Twitter. Uh, I apologize in advance for my Twitter, except I don't. Uh, I hope you like Yu Gi Oh! <laughs> 
and thank you so much, Thurston Hillman, for another amazing, amazing session today. All roads lead to Bogan Half, and don't blame me. It's all in the adventure. I mean, <laughs> hi. Thank, thank you. This has been this has been a blast. Uh, I really am looking forward to where this campaign is going, and uh, yeah, we'll see how this uh, this turns out at the Boatman Inn next time. And with Absolutely. That, let's go ahead and I'm say done. thank you to everyone who has been helping us out this stream. If it still works, this credit thing is always a broken piece of mess. Regardless, even if it doesn't show, thanks everybody Here we go. for supporting us and everything. Uh, there you oh, go. Thank that, you for watching. Kind of generated. There oh, there go. Go. Uh, tiny name. Yeah. You got everyone. Everyone, 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 everyone <laughs> goes. <laughs> thank you, Spocky. Good boy. Agent B. Agent B. Zipsaron, you choose to accept it. Jay Sharperton, look, I'm called GM. GM, what a dog! Thanks, Thanks for me. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, Good boy, four yeah. three two one. I absolutely you. a TC dragon. Thanks, a non metal dragon. <laughs> they uh, uh, was it Jay Jay Sharperton. Sharperton. As we as we begin to wind down, thank you all so much for joining us and watching us. Uh, if you really, really like the show, one of the best ways to kind of help us is just tell people we exist. Like, if you don't tell anybody that we exist, then we kind of just don't exist. We'll fade out into obscurity, and then we can't continue. So, with all that, just I telling, continue. yeah, literally just telling people that we exist. Tell you know, Reddit's Discord stuff like that that we uh, that the show does exist and that we stream at uh, a schedule page on Warhams.tv. Seriously, send people to Warhams.tv. Our schedule is there to see when we're live and when we're not. And that is the kind of best way to know uh, what is happening, along with following us on Twitter, at Warham Show on Twitter, where we give updates and stuff like that, where you can understand what the heck is going on. And also, if you are interested in doing some other stuff with me, um, tomorrow is my birthday, and I'm doing a birthday stream. So if you want to see some Warham's announcements, I'll be doing that at the beginning of the stream. Uh, just check me out at Zoran the Bear on Twitter for any information, and also if you're on my Discord, uh, there's information on there as well in the announcements, along with community stuff. So we're going to be doing some community events together and everything else. So if you want to see some Warhams announcements there, everything else, that is the best time to do it. But if you're watching this in the far future, uh, seriously, just following us on Twitter, going to the website, warhams.tv, and telling people that we exist is super helpful. You have no idea. Because the more people who can watch, the more stuff we can do. But yeah, love you guys very, very much. Hope you all have been having a wonderful time. And we will see you all next episode. Bye. 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 Bye.